It's time for Reason. And I think that we should take that same idea and apply it here in our local statewide elected seats. If you don't know how to lead and do it under a Republican agenda and push Republicans who may be green, who may be freshmen, who may be trying to learn the system, if you can't pressure them a little bit as the leader of one chamber or another in order to do something productive in a sense that actually abides by Republicanism, then you need to be out of leadership positions. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome into the Voice of Reason right here on the Mid-American Network. It is the day we've been looking forward to. You're so excited. You're giddy today. You're jumping out of bed. You're not even needing the coffee or the energy drink or whatever you end up taking in the morning to be able to get up and get moving for the day because it's a Friday, because you see the weekend around the corner, because you see a holiday just a week or so away with Halloween, which I cannot believe that we are at the end of that month already. Just about. We're getting close. We're getting ready. And let's enjoy it today. It's a free-for-all Friday. Let's do it. As usual, whatever's on your mind for a Friday, anything bothering you, troubling you, we can discuss it. We can lay it out. We've talked about it. Maybe not talked about it. It's a free-for-all. Up to you. Let's do it. All right. That's what we do. 721-8255, 721-TALK. If you want to join into the program, I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me a message on Facebook, on the Voice Reason page, on the KQAM page, and on the Twitter at Hoosier Reason. It's a great morning as we get started here. We know that it's something that we can enjoy a little bit. We are, throughout the state, there are some special elections happening just in a, uh, about two weeks already as well, which we do need to be prepared for. Starting next week, by the way, uh, for the local station here in Wichita, we are going to be talking to as many of the city council candidates and school board candidates as we possibly can. Hopefully in your local areas, you're going to be able to do so as well. If you're not in the Wichita area, and you guys can do that. But uh, a lot of things happening right now. And uh, I've noticed, and I don't know why, I'm not sure why in any way, shape, or form, why nobody, I listen to a lot of talk radio, obviously, not only just doing the morning show here, but then being the operations manager for Steckline Communications and all the stations that we are on. And I did. I have not heard a single talk show host, and maybe I missed it, but I have not heard a single talk show host Talk about the debate between Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders just two days ago on CNN. Now, I was not aware of the debate because it was not very publicly advertised or promoted uh, for a while. I was not even aware of the debate until after the fact. And then by the time that I found out about it, I didn't have time to collect some audio. And we just were too busy yesterday to talk about it anyways. So we're going to break it down. Because it was a debate on the tax reform bill from President Donald Trump, from the Republicans, trying to slash taxes, trying to consolidate taxes, and I think it was extremely important. Now, I said the last time that these two debated, when they debated about health care and Obamacare, that that should have been the presidential debate. Ted Cruz, Bernie Sanders, solid constitutional conservative, solid nut job liberal socialist. The two extremes of the parties, uh, quote-unquote extremes of the parties, the two uh, most ideologically driven individuals squaring off head-to-head, and I told you I guarantee 110% that Bernie Sanders would flop terribly in an election runoff between those two because the, the country is, regardless of the few fringe individuals that like the Bernie Sanders mentality, the democratic socialism, which I'm still waiting for a definition of what democratic socialism actually is, if it was between those two in a general election, it would be a landslide 48-state victory for Ted Cruz. Very, very simple. I think that anybody against Bernie Sanders would have been, even if it was Donald Trump and and Bernie Sanders, even if it was even maybe Jeb Bush and Bernie Sanders, it would have been a landslide victory because Bernie Sanders cannot win on a grand scale with his fringe ideology. It just can't. And when the two debate, I love it because it makes the socialist agenda look so absurd and ridiculous. It makes him look like a child. It really makes the liberal 
progressive agenda look like an eight-year-old mentality. So we're going to play some of those clips here in the first hour and get your ta- uh, take on it. Also, at the bottom of the hour, I am going to replay the interview that we had yesterday with Richard Carlson. He's the secretary for the Kansas Department of Transportation. Uh, I wasn't going to, but some of the information we talked about yesterday is extremely important. And as we talk about budgetary issues in the state, as we talk about priorities of spending at the statewide level, you really, really, really need to hear this. So whether you did hear it yesterday or you did not get a chance to, uh, it's extremely important because it blows your mind. It totally blows your mind because they talk about, we talked about things that you will never hear in the media, that the progressives don't want to get out. And when we go into a midterm election next year, when we start deciding who's going to be the next governor, when we start talking about budgetary issues in the legislative session coming up in just a couple of months, you need to be aware of what's really happening statewide with our funding and with our projects. So I find it very fascinating what he talked about. We'll talk about that at the bottom of the hour, so stay tuned in for that. Uh, but first, I've got to play some of this stuff because nobody else is doing it for whatever reason. They're too worried about uh, Harvey Weinstein and sex scandals and the latest evil tweet against Donald Trump and the military family that feels offended against Donald Trump because he said that he was insensitive. Give me a break. Donald Trump did not go out of his way to try and offend somebody based on a comment because of her husband passing uh, in the military. It's completely absurd. It's completely ridiculous. And again, it takes our eye off the ball on serious issues. And I'm not going to go there. I'm just not going to do it. So let's talk about taxes, shall we? Because I don't know, your tax rate as an individual or as a business is just a little important, right? 316-721-8255, 316-721-8255, 316-721-TALK. If you do want to join into the program, here was the introduction of Ted Cruz on the debate stage at CNN two days ago against Bernie Sanders. Tax cuts are about jobs and more money in your pocket, more money for the single mom to buy books for her kids, for the truck driver to be able to afford sending his daughter to college, for the family who's struggling to make ends meet to be able to save up and go to Disney World. This debate is very, very simple. Bernie and the Democrats want to raise your taxes, and the Republicans want to cut them so that you have more in your pocket. That's really what it breaks down to. And that's a good generalization of how this debate, it was just a little over an hour, hour and 20 minutes or something. And as you can tell, Bernie Sanders, and I found it very odd, and we'll we'll progress through this a little bit. (laughs) He starts off the entire debate, and as usual, tries to generalize and throw the straw man argument in there because that's what progressives do. They don't know anything specific, so they have to generalize ideologically. And, well, we need to not cut taxes for the top 1% or the one-tenth of 1% up there because all the millionaires and billionaires, and it's all evil because that's what Republicans like to do is cut taxes for the very wealthy, and we can't be doing that. We need to be focusing on the middle class. And he advocated and said that he would support, Bernie Sanders, by the way, support cutting taxes for the middle class, Then at the end of the debate, starts talking about all the social programs that we need. We need free college, and we need free... uh, Thank you for that EAS test very much. Uh, Welcome back into The Voice Reason. Uh, He goes into the debate at the beginning, attacking the 1% and the top 1%. He goes in and ends the debate talking about all the social programs that we need and how we all need to pay our fair share, and we need to chip in because free things aren't really free from the government, and therefore we all need to just chip in and pay for them. That's what Bernie Sanders talked about on this debate on Wednesday. This is massive tax breaks for the wealthy. And then the other thing they do in order to pay for their tax breaks, you know what they do? They cut Medicaid over a 10-year period by $1 trillion, throwing 15 million Americans off of the health insurance they have. They cut Medicare by $470 billion. So what this is, in fact, is a proposal, which is right on the floor of the Senate right now. Senator Cruz and I going back tomorrow. We're going to continue the debate. It is a Robin Hood proposal in reverse. They're taking from the working families and the poor and they're giving to the rich. It's a proposal that must be defeated. That was the introduction from Bernie Sanders. Taking from the middle class and giving it to the rich and elite. Now he says that we should take from the uh, does he even know, by the way? what Robin Hood was actually about. Does he even know the real story about it? And the progressives use this a lot. They use this argument about Robin Hood quite a bit, about how the conservatives are giving tax breaks to the rich and then taxing the middle class and the poor, and then it's just not all fair, and we just, you know, it's the Robin Hood scheme that's going on right now. 
And if you would actually listen to a progressive, you would understand that they have the reverse Robin Hood scheme going on because they are the sheriff of Nottingham. They are the government. They are the kings that are stealing from them because we feel that we need to have social programs and big bloated programs to the government, and therefore we just need to pay our fair share. So they're, they actually advocate to take money away from everybody, including the rich and elite, because, you know, if you make a lot of money, then you just need to pay your fair share because how dare you actually be successful in life. And, oh, by the way, in the state of Kansas, when we talk about uh, raising taxes as we just did in this last year in our legislative session, you making $60,000 as a family, oh, yeah, you need to pay the highest tax rate in the state of Kansas because, well, you need to pay your fair share because you've gotten it really easy the last few years under that evil, terrible Governor Sam Brownback because he gave you tax breaks for the rich and elite making $60,000 as a family. Yes, you need to pay your fair share, so you need to be in the highest tax bracket. That, ladies and gentlemen is what Robin Hood fought against. He didn't take it from the middle class and give it to rich and elite individuals. What he did, or steal it from the uh, steal it from the rich and elite and give it to the middle, no, he stole it from the government that was taking it from them, from the kings. And that's exactly what Bernie Sanders wants, is it not? We need free college. We need free health care. We need free this. We need free that. We need the government to do this for us because it's so wonderful and we love socialism. So we need your tax money. Isn't that exactly what happened in Robin Hood? And the reason Robin Hood needed to steal the money back from the government? Oh, yeah. Bad analogy, buddy. But it's all right. It's an eight-year-old trying to explain philosophy to us. Well done, buddy. This is The Voice of Reasoning on the Mid-American Network. Stay right here. You're listening to The Voice of Reason on the Mid-American Network. of tax breaks for the wealthy. And then the other thing they do in order to pay for their tax breaks, you know what they do? They cut Medicaid over a 10-year period by $1 trillion, throwing 15 million Americans off of the health insurance they have. They cut Medicare by $470 billion. So what this is, in fact, is a proposal, which is right on the floor of the Senate right now. Senator Cruz and I going back tomorrow. We're going to continue the debate. It is a Robin Hood proposal in reverse. They're taking from the working families and the poor, and they're giving to the rich. It's a proposal that must be defeated. (laughs) I love it. Oh, it just exposes the lunacy in it, right? Every day. It is totally absurd. Yeah, totally absurd. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason here. 316-721-8255. 316-721-TALK. What's on your mind? What did, did you watch it? Did you hear any bit of it? Uh, and what's your take on the Bernie Sanders-Ted Cruz debate on tax reform? They are debating it. They, According to President Donald Trump, they should be voting on it in the next week or so here, I believe. He thinks he's got enough votes to be able to do something like this. And now, according to the Senate because the Senate is just the Senate, and this is what they like to do, is that now they're talking about doing a, well, we'll do some kind of tax reform. We'll do some kind of tax reform, but I don't know what how much will actually get done because we got a lot of things to take care of. Are you noticing that it's the same routine over and over and over again with the repealing of Obamacare, with doing the tax reform, with doing the budget? Yeah, we got a lot going on. We'll just get to a little bit of it if we can. Maybe we'll do a budget. Uh, maybe we'll do a tax reform light. An Obamacare light health care plan and a tax reform light bill there. So that way we can say we did something, but it's not going to be to the extreme of what you really want to do. We're not going to be to the extreme. There was, uh, along with the CNN debate, uh, they did an interview or they had a group of individuals there, a little panel, and they had some questions from the audience. And the very first one was one directed towards Senator Cruz, who was a college student, saying, why should I support, or as a college student, I grew up in a middle-class middle family, worked hard to get to college, yada, 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 and why should I support a, a, a corporate tax break when there's very little tax break for the middle class? Why should I support something like that? Trying to be condescending to Senator Cruz. Senator Cruz. 
I come from a middle class family and I worked hard in high school to get into a competitive college. But even after academic scholarships, my parents and I are still struggling to afford my education and that's without indirect costs. Mm -hmm. So it's hard then for families like mine to see the benefits of cutting corporate tax rates and reattempting trickle down economics when that hasn't been a long term solution for the middle class in the past. How would you justify cutting the corporate tax rate by 15%, but only barely making a dent in the tax rate for middle class Americans? All right, so a completely ridiculous, absurd question. First off, I hate the term, hate the term trickle down economics. And it's a term that's been coined, and we need to remember this it's a, to- a coin that's a term that's been coined by progressives because they feel that what it is, it's a tax rate on corporations and for big business owners and all the richy riches. And then it just trickles down the system because then they allow the people to have jobs. And that's not the case at all. It is not a trickle-down system, and we need to get rid of that terminology. Obviously, this individual has been has uh, done well under the education system of higher education and college and the progressives there and that mentality because it's not a trickle-down system. I never want to hear a conservative or a Republican mention the term trickle-down economics. Whether you call it Reaganomics, whether you call it trickle-down, it's not. Because when you give tax breaks across the board, corporations, large businesses, small businesses, individuals, when you give that tax break, it's not this overlording corporation evil, big richy riches at the top, and then, oh, these little people at the bottom scrobbling and just grasping at the straws for whatever pennies fall through in order for us to hope that we have some kind of job opportunity. That's not the case. That would be a ideal trickle down. If you want to talk about a trickle down system, why don't we refer that to the education system at the statewide levels to where you have the administrators that get 80, 90 percent of the funding. And then the teachers and the students and the resources in the classroom are desperate to scrabble and be able to get a few cents here and there in order for them to get the proper funding in the classroom. That would be trickle down economics. That would be a trickle down system. The private sector is not a trickle-down system because you have large corporations, you have small business owners, you have medium-sized business owners, you have people that are right on that threshold between small and large businesses or that are trying to transition to uh, a corporation and trying to go to a C-corp or an S-corp that are transitioning and growing from a, a sole proprietorship. You have people that are expanding all the time. You have people that have businesses that have two employees, that have 20 employees, that have 100 employees, and then have 10,000 employees. There's a wide range in there, and it's not a trickle down anybody. If we do tax breaks across the board, large and small for big and little individuals, anybody can actually flourish and actually do well with them. Anybody can actually benefit from them. It is not a trickle down system. And it's a term that's been used by progressives nonstop. It's a term that's used in, in, in academics. It's a term that's used in college universities. It's a term that's used by liberals to try and demonize a cut, a tax cut for businesses and individuals across the board. They don't like cutting taxes because that cuts into their pockets and therefore they can't spend the way that they want to. So they demonize it by calling it a trickle-down system to where we're the peons at the bottom, the peasants, groveling for the corporation to please let us have an opportunity to get some of that benefit and please let us have an opportunity to be able to work for your business because you're sitting there as the fat cat up at the top just enjoying it. And that's not the case. Trickle-down system would be the bureaucrats and the unions that are holding on to the money and making the uh, workers and the laborers, uh, laborers grovel for a little bit of those benefits while the richy riches at the top of the bureaucratic state are the ones enjoying those. We'll continue this when we come back at a caller on the line as well. Stay here. This is the Voice of Reason. Time for reason. If you're putting money away, it's already been taxed when you went through your income. Why do we have to tax it a second time when you actually try to draw on your retirement plan and say, yeah, I actually want to live because I don't want to work anymore for the last 10 years of my life? The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Hey, good morning to you. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason. It's a free for all Friday right here on the Bit American Network, and I want to hear from you. 316 721 8255. 316 721 Talk. You can shoot me a message on Facebook, on Twitter, on the Facebook live feed we have going on right now as 
Many people checking that out. I heard uh, yesterday a lot of individuals say, I like to be able to turn it on on my phone in the morning while I'm getting ready. Makes me be able to listen to a little bit longer. We appreciate that, and thank you much. Let's go right to the phones here, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? This is Jim. Good morning, Jim. How are you? Oh, I'm just doing great. Go ahead. Got two, two comments for you. Go for it. Uh, the first one has got to do with the uh, brouhaha about uh, President Trump's remarks to the widow. And I just quote, uh, or may paraphrase, John Wayne, uh, it's brave when you get on your saddle and go off with a posse, even though you know that uh, you're at risk. Uh, that's kind of what he said. He said he knew what he signed up for. What he what was probably said, or at least was certainly implied, was he joined up knowing that he was at risk because he was a brave man and a brave soldier. Yes. So anyway, the other comment I have, I want to answer the question to that uh, uh, college student, I guess college student, or maybe a high school student, who uh, asked Senator Cruz about why we should do tax cuts. Sure. And the answer he should have given was, do you and your other graduates want to get a job in the future, or do you want to live on welfare the rest of your life? And that's exactly what he said. He responded back by saying, well, the simplest answer is that you want a job when you get out of college because, uh, well, that's what you go to college for. You want to have four or five job opportunities lined up. And, oh, by the way, cutting corporate tax rates are going to keep uh, companies and corporations here, which is going to actually, because we do have uh, in all so to speak, we have some of the highest corporate tax rates in the entire world, uh, the de- developmental world, and uh, if we're going to keep them here, we need to keep them happy, which means we need to keep tax breaks here, so that way they can incentivize to stay and grow, and therefore you have an opportunity to get a job when you get out of college. And that's exactly what he uh, responded with. And that points back to the failure of our schools to educate people about economics. Yes. You know, we have teachers in schools who are generally socialists in mental attitude. They they are, uh, you know, if they, if they were ever actually instructed and understood edu- you know, education and economics, they forgot it. But I think they go to school and they are indoctrinated by teachers who uh, actually lean very strongly towards the socialists and often the communists. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I told I think I've said the story on the air about when I was in college and I and I started taking some of these economic classes and there were professors who and I didn't take that class, but a couple of my peers did uh, from the College of Republicans had taken classes on uh, where the professor had specialized in that economic field of communism and they one of the parts of the semester was a discussion and the in-depth expl- explanation on communism and about halfway through the curriculum the professor who specializes in the understanding of communism couldn't figure out how to explain it properly and ended up throwing that entire part of the curriculum out of that semester because they couldn't properly do that because it was too complicated to teach the students. And this is the professor who specializes in that field of economics. And that's exactly what they're taught. We're taught the microeconomics, the macroeconomics. We're taught about, uh, I mean, they teach you about how uh, we need to use quantitative easing with a budget, how the country is actually better off while spending in debt, how we need to spend uh, more for so- for the social programs. We start learning about how great that the Scandinavian countries are, which is why Bernie Sanders uses that quite often, about Denmark and Sweden and all these other nations that have all these great socialized programs and how we're the we're the first world country that's lagging behind everybody else because we're so terrible being a Western civilization that does not focus our attention so much on social programs and universal health care and everything of the sorts. That's yeah. what we're taught in college every single day. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the I think, I don't remember who it was, Margaret Thatcher or somebody that said that socialism works wonderfully until you run out of everybody else's money. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, and it works perfect in theory. It's a happy-go-lucky, nice little utopia to where everybody's working together and nobody has more than anybody else and everybody just contributes their fair share and then everybody gets all the necessities that they need and the government provides it while the government's not intruding on anybody's individual rights. And it's a happy, perfect little world. It's a fairy tale that progressives live in. And then when you when you dash them with the cold douse of water, then they don't like that very much because you're interrupting their fantasy. It's like chasing the dragon when you're on a, a drug because it feels so good that you never want to leave. When 
I was a child, the United States was the richest country in the world, and we loaned money to people around the world. We rebuilt Europe. We rebuilt Japan. We rebuilt Germany. We actually even rebuilt you know, Russia. Sure. And But our welfare system, which began basically in the 1960s, has taken us from a country which was awash with wealth to now we are the biggest desert nation in the history of the world. And we are living only because the government is printing money without anything to back it up. And we now have a dollar, which is worth about one cent. It's yeah, I mean, it's 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 very, very cheap. And Jim, I appreciate the call. You're absolutely, I would go back a little bit earlier, though, and say that the social programs and the and the and that mentality started during the Great Deal and FDR, and that's when it really began. And that rebuilding of Europe after World War II and uh, the investments that we had everybody, everywhere else, and that was the creation of Social Security, and it was only supposed to be a temporary thing. That was the creation of welfare, which, again, I see the need for social programs like that, but we can't depend on that as the, as the main objective. That needs to be the, well, the people that fall through the cracks in the system, that's where they are, and it's only going to be a temporary thing for you to be on. Uh, that's the way we need to have that mentality. The rest of it is the American exceptionalism that we have is you have the ability to create a business. You have to create uh, the ability to be innovative and create something that you want to without the government telling you no. You have the ability to actually go out and pursue a dream and take care of your family and do better than your ancestors did, better than your past generation, better than your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents. You have that opportunity. It's whether you choose to utilize it or not. That's the American dream. And then when we go in and talk about the Scandinavian nations and we talk about socialism and we talk about Denmark and Sweden and all these other great places where they have the universal health care and they have all these high taxes, but you get so many great things because of it. And why can't we just do something like that? First off, it's unconstitutional, whether you want it or not. It's unconstitutional against our rule of law. So that just throws that argument out the window. But if you want to, you know, just play with it for a little bit. They have a nation of how many people, how many in the population, maybe three, four, five million people, whereas we have 330 plus million individuals in the United States. Can we really sustain the same type of system that they have over there? Second off, third off, the quality standards. If we have so many more people, then how are we going to maintain quality? Fourth off, how are we going to incentivize individuals? And, and Ted Cruz made the really good point uh, during this debate that if you took 100% of every bit of the income of anybody making a million dollars or more and you consumed 100% of their income, that would create close to a trillion dollars in revenue for the government. The spending that Bernie Sanders has proposed is close to $13 trillion in additional spending for universal health care, for free college tuition, for this, for that. If you have $13 trillion in additional spending, not including what we're doing right now where we're getting into a trillion dollars of debt every single year, but additional $13 trillion and you consume the revenue or the profits of 100% of every individual making a million dollars or more, you create about a trillion dollars in revenue. Not to mention the fact that if you do that, do you think they're going to continue to work and make that million dollars plus every single year? Because, hey, you know what? That's my incentive. I'm going to work and work and work and work and work and bust my hump, and then I'm going to turn around and the government's going to take every bit of it. What's the incentive to even do that? So the meat and potatoes of the revenue that comes into the government comes from the middle class, which means you have to take care of the middle class. So it grows. So it expands. Again, trickle-down economics and that mentality and that idea, that term of trickle-down is total BS. As Bernie Sanders would say, It is totally absurd. It is totally absurd. Because trickle-down economics means nothing. Trickle-down in the government, absolutely. The higher bureaucrats control it up top. Then it trickles down to maybe the unions that try and represent the employees, quote unquote. And then they they have the employees groveling for goods, conditions or better wages. And then they fight for more because they always need more. So it all trickles down. You want to talk about trickle down? Let's talk about the education system and the educational spending in the state of Kansas and everywhere else. If that's what you want to talk about. Trickle down's a bunch of BS. When it comes to the private sector, because everybody benefits from the small business that has two employees and those two employees are probably family members uh, all the way up to the large corporation like Walmart that has hundreds of thousands of employees. Trickle down 
is non-existent in the private sector. I'm sorry. Now, here's Bernie Sanders' response to that uh, college student. In order to give incredible tax breaks to the 1%, uh, the Republican budget that we're debating right now would slash Pell Grant funding. funding. Uh, Pell Grants are the major source of federal help for working class young people. It would slash that funding, if you could believe it, at a time when so many young people are struggling to figure out how they're going to go to college, these guys want to cut Pell Grants by a hundred billion dollars. They want to cut housing assistance all over this country. If you're a young person, you're thinking of get, getting an apartment, getting a house. We have millions of people who are spending 40, 50 percent of their limited incomes on housing. They want to cut Section 8 housing and other housing programs by $37 billion. What the hell are you talking about? We're talking about the incentive for college students to actually go to college, get an education, and be able to go and get a job thereafter. And the question is, why would you actually cut corporate taxes? Now, obviously, Bernie Sanders does not want to cut corporate taxes, so he's obviously against that. But we're talking about cutting corporate taxes and the, in- and the incentive for the college student to come out and get a job and Ted Cruz answers that perfectly. Hey, you know what? You want to have a job opportunity when you get out. You you need to actually have the businesses be allowed and have the ability to hire you because they have low tax rates. And Bernie Sanders goes off on a tangent. Oh, Section 8 housing, and we got to take care of those college students with their housing. What are you talking? I don't know a single college student that signs up for Section 8 housing because they're going to college. Are you kidding me? They're in the dorm room, or they're with their parents, or maybe they rent a house outside of the co- the university. But you're talking about Section 8 housing when you're trying to discuss colleges? Give me it. Again, the lunacy of the left. Reason with Andy Hoosier on the Mid-America Network. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason, wrapping up our number one already. It's gone by way too fast, and I'm not that excited today, am I? I'm not that fired up. Just uh, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> this portion of the Voice of Reason brought to you by Inman Harvest Cafe. It's not just a Friday. It's not just a free-for-all Friday, but as you know, it's a fried chicken Friday. 112 South Main Street in downtown Inman, and Katie's online with us. Katie, good morning to you. Good morning, Andy. Happy Fried Chicken Friday. Happy Fried Chicken Friday. It's the day we all look forward to. It's just a celebration yeah. across the board, no matter what your flavor is for a Friday. And Fried Chicken Friday is the way to go. What do you got lined up for us today? Today we're fixing, uh, well, first we're fixing some some kind, let me just say some kind, of butternut squash. Now, Ooh. I don't know, yeah, my my... Uh, assistant cook here, she hasn't decided exactly what she's going to do. So we've got a couple of different options. We could go either savory with uh, that's going to have some chicken in it, some onions, some peppers, and some seasonings in it. Or we could go sweet, like brown sugar, butter, marshmallows on top, similar to a sweet potato. So I don't know. It's going to be a surprise to me, too. But I bet I bet by your third hour I'll know. <laughs> that sounds yeah. okay. delicious. <laughs> so then uh, we're also going to have a baked tilapia. It's a garlic butter herb baked tilapia with our own seasonings and everything like that. Real butter. We don't use. They have this product called Butter It, and it's liquid. Uh, honestly, don't know what it is. So <laughs> we don't even have that in our store. So if you've even heard of that and you like it, I'm sorry, you're going to get real butter from real a real butter. cow. Real well, butter. That's the so. American way anyways. That's right. I totally agree. Yeah. You know, I always, when I was a kid, I used to drag my fingers through the butter, you know, and yeah. just like, I love I love butter, but I don't do that anymore because it's not good for you. Well, you know what? They say that milk gives you cancer, though, nowadays. Come on. Enjoy a little bit and live. And and butter, I mean, butter is Uh, almost to the the about the grade of of greatness as cheese, so it's okay. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. So we're having those two things, and then we're also having a chicken and Alfredo lasagna. So Mm. it'll be a white sauce lasagna with the cheese and the chicken and uh Kind of a cr- uh, crumb topping. Oh, and beep, beep, you hear that? That is my cherry rolls 
that I, I got it. up at 4 o'clock in the morning to make. So here they are. And they're fresh and ready to go for anybody that wants to come down and get a fresh cherry roll. Uh, it's a great so. time. We need to remind individuals as well. I mean, this stuff's available all day long. It's going to be great. But uh, And you have your buffet from 11 to 1 for lunchtime, your big buffet from yes. 5 to 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, and that yes. one includes the free slice of pie. you got to get your pie before it's gone because it's fantastic. And uh, what's the lineup of the pies yes. there as well? That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> what's the pies like? What's the pies? <laughs> Okay, so the pies today are coconut cream, peanut butter cream, Uh, custard, uh, uh, cherry, rhubarb, uh, um, I forgot already. (laughs) Oh, yeah, blueberry, Mm. chocolate pecan, and oatmeal raisin. And then Nick wanted me to assure everyone that we will not run out of pie. So if you are late, there will be pie for you. We're also going to make a banana split this afternoon after lunch. See, we have to wait until after lunch sometimes to make pies because then we will have pies at supper because they eat them at lunch, see, and then they're gone. So uh, we'll make a banana split and a lemon meringue this afternoon. I love it. It's uh, it's a day to enjoy and to flourish. It's Inman's, Inman Harvest Cafe, 112 South Main Street in downtown Inman. It's the Fried Chicken Friday. Uh, Katie, you guys enjoy. We'll catch up with you guys uh, again in the 8 o'clock hour. All right, great. We'll talk to you then. I love it. It's a great time there. Now, uh, and Mike, actually, uh, Mike and Robin Lace in studio here as we're getting ready for hour number two, and you actually got to experience the last couple of weeks on Thursdays. Well, uh, I've experienced it a couple of times. I've experienced it once on Thursday, which is Mennonite Buffet, mm-hmm. uh, coming from Mennonite Heritage. And a lot of Kansas will know about Verenica, Beer Rocks, all of that good stuff. As good of a Beer Rock as I've ever had, Verenica was great. Uh, but we went up for the fried chicken uh, Friday a few weeks ago, too. And Katie and, I mean, her husband and Nick are just wonderful, wonderful people. And I, I, I don't give unsolicited endorsements. I mean, I just don't do that. That said, one of the best home style buffets I've ever had. Really, uh, it I tasted love it. it tasted so much like real home cooking. There's nothing processed in the in the food, and I, we're, we we keep going back. It's about a 45 minute drive from Midtown, but. Uh, we'll be totally back again. worth it. Oh, absolutely worth it. You totally know? worth it. Absolutely worth it. So. I love it. I it's, I I am actually. Uh, I don't know if they're listening or not. Planning on going up and checking them out uh, next week at some time. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's a great time. It's Inman Harvest Cafe, 112 South Main Street in downtown Inman, just north of Hutchinson. Six two zero five eight five sixty nine twenty five. If you want to go and check them out, we'd love for you to do so. Wrapping up hour number one, we get a lot more to cover here. Robin Lace, Mike Furch is in studio along with some special guests in the seven o'clock hour. Everybody on the western part of the state and beyond have a great weekend we'll be back on monday we will play that interview with richard carlson the secretary of the kansas department of transportation on monday stay tuned in for that everybody here in wichita get ready hour number two coming up in just a minute this is the voice of reason It's time for Reason. And I think that we should take that same idea and apply it here in our local statewide elected seats. If you don't know how to lead and do it under a Republican agenda and push Republicans who may be green, who may be freshmen, who may be trying to learn the system, if you can't pressure them a little bit as the leader of one chamber or another in order to do something productive in a sense that actually abides by Republicanism, then you need to be out of leadership positions. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Good morning to you. Welcome into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker. 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side. KQAM, it is a Friday, the day we've been looking forward to. It's the day that we can carpe diem. We can spill our carpe diem all over the place as we're <laughs> doing things productively on a Friday, apparently. We are, what, a week and a half away from Halloween. I cannot believe it. It's going by way too fast. But it's a Friday. Not just that. It's a free-for-all Friday. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Whatever's on your mind, whatever's troubling you, bothering you, burdening you, I am your political therapist. Let's work through it together, my friends. It's a free-for-all. Let's talk about it. Come on. Let's do it. All right. 721-8255, 721-8255, 721-8255, 721-TALK. If you want to join into the program, you're more than welcome to do so. Shoot me a message on Facebook, on the Voice Reason page, on the KQAM page, 
and on the Twitter at Hoosier Reason. The Facebook Live feed's up and rocking as well. If you want to check that out, you're more than welcome to. Appreciate it if you like it and share it. Spread it around as we talk about, well, numerous different things. Uh, Robin Layson Studio. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. How are you? It's been a while since you've been here. I've been in lovely Colorado. You've been in Colorado being chased by bears and mountain lions and having a grand old time. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah. It's been interesting. It's been interesting. Yeah. Now, what's is it cold out there? You know, that one day we were supposed to have some snow, like on a Monday, Ugh. a bit back, and it was just a beautiful snow, but then it didn't stick. Ugh. You know, but I hear it when we might have some more on no. Monday. But it's beautiful. It looks so pretty in the mountains yeah, it right looks there. looks pretty, but unless it, I'm on yeah. a snowboard at the top of the mountain, I don't want to see snow. I like uh, this 70 degrees every day. This yeah. makes me happy. Right. And it can just stay like this. I'd totally yeah. be fine with that. Yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you what, when I get back, though, I'm going to go check out this new place that's called Joyful Journey. And they do have RV parking. You know, I'm working for some RV go. parks and stuff around the United States. And uh, so now I'm going to be like showing them my brand new, my brand new, brand spanking new travel trailer from Wichita RV. <laughs> I'm so happy that my friends from Wichita RV are going to join me this morning because they're, this has just been the most amazing experience, man. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. So yeah, I'm going to. So you guys are hanging out in the RV right now. That's uh, that's kind yeah. of the, that's the plan. Total RV life, man. I love it. I, I that would be fun. Yeah, you it can is. Kind of drive around, travel wherever you need to, do yeah, what you exactly. need to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, just... when I when I was a little girl, my dad and grandpa built a cabin, an A-frame cabin on Cheney Lake. Sure. Okay. And then when they sold the cabin, I was just devastated. I'm like, oh, you know, we rode horses. We, went, I mean, dad threw me in the lake and said, here's a life jacket, learn to ski. So I mean, I had so much fun, you know. And then they bought a camper, and that was it. I was mm-hmm. hooked. So from a little girl, I've been a camper. Yeah. See, I love the camping. Now, I yeah. one of these days, I'll do the whole RV thing. Uh huh. You'll love one it. of these days i have a yeah. fireplace in your rv yeah there you go see you got <laughs> all the all Who the knew? all the amenities right there for you right there you go yeah. well good and, and then pam's here from salon naughty and she cut keith's hair monday thank god he had that mountain man growth it was in the little it was funny i was yeah. gonna say he it looked a lot like better he came now. from the mountains of colorado <laughs> hey guys how's it going that's right <laughs> So we're going back in style, man. I can't. T- I just can't tell you how good it feels. Yes, and this yeah. in this show we have some guests in here, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and as you mentioned, we started doing the introduction here, but mm-hmm. uh, focusing today on small business opportunities. Yes. And as you know, Steckling Communications being a private mm-hmm. small business as mm-hmm. well, and we have the opportunity to do our thing and the economy trying to grow. The yeah. the the economy slowly coming back mm-hmm. from the Obama eras, in my mm-hmm. opinion. But right. we, we're not going to go down that road. Well, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, on Wichita was pretty brutal. Exactly. And it's been a struggle. So the, the small businesses where the focus needs to be. Right. And as you know, as we adver- have advertisers, we have different ways to try and help small businesses mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. consumers that listen to that. And it's mm-hmm. just the whole circle here. Right. So let's introduce our guests here. So we yeah, have I'm going to start with Pam yep. real quick. Pam okay. from Salon Naughty. Hi, honey. Hi, good morning, good everybody. Good morning to you. Good Are you going to do some work? Early morning. Right. <laughs> hey, thank you. I'm still wearing my bracelet, by the way. What what, what happened with I, you that? You know what? When I saw that, I thought, mine must, I, mine must have rolled off. I know. Well, mine did a couple times. Ah, How did that go? I have, I have a few extra. Okay, good. Good, good. Okay, Salon Naughty. Naughty. What's going on over at Salon Naughty? New location, kind of? Mm, New bit? location. Yeah. Uh, we're still uh, over on Rock Road, uh, just north of 13th. Mm-hmm. And we, for 15 years, we've been located inside. I just leased space inside Genesis on Rock Road. Mm-hmm. And it just huge, huge, huge salon. Yeah. But at this point in my career, I'm just ready for a little bit less responsibility. I don't blame you. So the building directly to the south of the club is called the Executive Court Building. Mm-hmm. And I built a thousand square foot salon in there. So wow. And a thousand little, is still pretty big, honey. Yeah. Yeah, it's still pretty big. But yeah, <laughs> not, com- <laughs> not, not compared to almost three thousand. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Wow. I don't have an office. Oh, I'm man. trying to figure out how to make myself a little cubicle, though. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, your office, even though I've, I've been in your office and it was full. Yeah. Because you're always ordering and try, there's new try moving and, all that stuff out. Yeah, no after thanks. Fifteen years. No, I just did that after <laughs> 25 years in my house. No thanks, man. No thanks. Yeah. So, how do you like it? What's going on? We love it. Yeah. Um, Right now, we still have some finishing touches to do in there. We've been there since the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. And um, it was unseasonably busy for us this summer, which is good. good. I'm not complaining. But typically, it slows down a little bit in the summertime. People going on vacations. Mm -hmm. They're doing stuff with their kids. They have things to do. So Mm -hmm. they're not as consistent as coming in on uh, as their regular basis. So um, I didn't get a lot of the finishing touches done um, because I was busy. And as I was building that new salon... I was there before work. I was there after work. I was there on the evenings. I was like, and so I decided after I got moved in there, yeah, if I can't get it done in between clients, mm-hmm. it's like I'm not doing it. Right. Okay. So, but then I didn't have any time in between clients. Right. Yeah. That happens. <laughs> so, so September, 
finally I got a couple of different days because I, I still work full time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so I was just ready to cut back on my responsibility as far as the employees mm -hmm. and all that. That's really strong commitment because um, I have had, you know, I had a salon in El Dorado for seven years mm -hmm. and I had this one for 15 years and trying to run both of them at the same time too. And it's just at this point in my career, yeah. I just want to do what makes me totally happy and that's yeah. here. I'm right. not ready to cut back on that. Right. At no, all. No. So, and I want to get into um, a little bit more of a the customer service experience, even though that we were that way, but I worked with assistants for such a long time right. yeah. and I don't now it's me right. and I take care of my own guests. And I love so it. we have a, a, a lot stronger, uh, Amenities. I guess one of my yeah. friends was just in yesterday. Uh, Is that the color. girl that had her bangs? Because I was seeing something about bangs. Okay, that, you know what? I, that's one of my friends from I'm high a bang school. Girl. Yeah. Not that lady isn't, but one of my friends from high school that lives in Dallas. Uh -huh. And uh, she called me a year ago and she had got a bad service in Dallas and mm. she wanted to come to Wichita for me to fix it. All right. So she came to Wichita, we deep conditioned her. I'm like, I don't know why you have a perm because you have natural curly hair. Right. And she had had one forever and ever yeah. and ever. Okay, so everybody liked the change that I did on her yeah. so much that when she was here in August, she brought one of these other ladies that she, right because they do competitive dancing and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she says, I just really would like for you to help Dorinda. She doesn't know what to do with her hair. It's a little yeah. bit thin. And she just gave me carte blanche. She said, here, wow, do it. Yeah. And it came out amazing. Oh, and she yeah. was so excited. Actually, she started crying. Oh, does she like so that? So it's like, what I tell everybody is that, you know, you might want to lose 30 pounds. You might be contemplating a divorce, a friend or family <laughs> member that is <coughs> suffering through alcohol or drug abuse Whatever, yeah. or fighting cancer. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're not going to fix any of those things in no. a couple hours. Oh, heck no. But you cannot believe how much you can change somebody's outlook right. by just doing something up here. Yeah. It's amazing, it, isn't it? It is. and they feel so good. I said something about the bangs, you know, mm -hmm. earlier, and somebody said, "Oh, bangs are out of style," and I'm like, "Oh, go tell Goldie Hawn, you know, because that's not true." Um, I would say bangs are sexy I love on anybody. Bangs. Yes, thank you. Okay, see, bangs are not out of style. Bangs are. See, said. I've heard the same thing that bangs are out of style, and that's that's, that's not kind true. Of, that's not the trend anymore. Actually, actually, right now they're really strong for this fall. Really, bangs are really strong. They're for coming this fall. back. See, so, all right. So here's the question, because you know, I. Uh, uh, we had joked about this on the TV show earlier this week, yeah, we but did. doing kind of a makeover thing this uh, morning on me. I don't know if that's going to happen or I not. Think we I, just, we should, so here, the, I brought my bag. You brought your stuff. Oh, fantastic. There, so <laughs> the, I guess the question is for guys, what's the new trend? What's the style? I've seen the, the whole like buzz cut thing on the side with the long hair that's like the comb over with the buzz on the sides. Okay, and the, so it's I, kind I, of like for a, the, the most current thing right now for guys is a fade uh, in different degrees, you know, from a zero fade up to just a little bit, but it's, it's graduated. And whether the top is short or the top is longer, a heavy part is what's really in. Mm -hmm. And I have a large male clientele, so I even have my businessmen that have a heavy part. And it just looks like a really strong part, but I actually even brought my tool today to that do cuts that? that heavy part. Oh. So, I think it, yeah. so <laughs> all it's, right. it's all about, uh, it's <laughs> one of the things, and I told you this the other day, is that um, Men really appreciate it when women take care of their self, the mm -hmm. grooming. I mean, we wax nose hair, we wax mm -hmm. ear hair. Um, guys should have their eyebrow shaped too. There's no reason for them looking right. so burly and right. everything all the time. I've never done that before. You never. Well, you have pretty decent eyebrows. You, have great you don't do eyebrows. anything with this. Uh, no, I've never wow. done. You're lucky then. I've never no touched them before. Uh, yeah, yeah. At lucky. All. But you lucky. know, women appreciate it when guys take care of themselves too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, I, yeah. So well, I think we're going to wax your chest, but while we're getting ready for that, that's what Robin um, wanted. <laughs> wait a second here. Wait a second here. We did not agree to that part of this conversation. <laughs> but that's what I wanted to do. Okay. I think he told you no the other day. He did. He, he did. I just thought maybe he could forget about that part. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! Here we are. Welcome to radio. Uh, we'll uh, we'll discuss that one. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and take a break here. Seventeen okay, minutes gotcha. past the hour, but uh, we're talking of small business and maybe doing some. If you're watching the Facebook Live, it may be ideal for you to. I Apparently, check this out and see what kind of shenanigans may happen in this hour today. 728 talk This is the Voice of Reason on KQAM. Stay here. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier.
Welcome back into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker KQAM. Great to have you along today on a Friday. It's a free-for-all Friday. Appreciate you hanging out with us here on Facebook Live. Many people checking it out. If you have any comments, questions, you're more than welcome to do so there. You can give us a call, 721-8255-721-TALK. Robin Lace in studio along with uh, Pam. Now, uh, this this make or this hair deal, how long will that, do you think, take? If we do that maybe after the bottom of the hour and give about a half hour time? Oh, that's what, that, I, got, I don't need that much time. Oh, you don't even need that much time. Okay. I well, can probably do it 15, 20. 15, 20. Okay. We'll do, we'll do that after the bottom of the hour here. We'll get that started if you're watching. the fa- If you're not watching the Facebook Live, I guess you can turn that on. Uh, now, <laughs> what I usually do with mine is I usually like it. Kind of like it is here, just but shorter, where I just kind of do the messy gel thing and just have it okay, kind of... that's the, okay, but, you know, we could kind of really update that a little bit. Yeah, is that out of style? It's... A little bit? You could update it a little bit. <laughs> update it a little Okay. <laughs> we could uh, make it a little more retro on there. And uh, I need to stay hip with the young generation, so, I mean, hey... Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, see, I am part of the millennial generation oh which god i, I feel sorry for you i see so i need to stay retro and hip on this stuff so <laughs> i uh, and i don't necessarily do that as much so uh whatever you think it's up to you you can surprise me okay and uh, and you have that natural blonde streak it right in the front that's that's a birthmark right there yeah. that's just that white spot right yeah. there it's uh yeah it's it's no i does it how far back does it go but it's in like a really cool spot yeah it's really it's just a it's just right there okay. yeah right just right there that's it uh i've never died i've dyed my hair one time in college i dyed it black on a dare uh-huh. and that was it so i've never really colored my i take that back i used green hair gel for saint patty's day i remember that yeah yeah see that was I a great time that. so but other than that it's a, yeah surprise me with whatever you think is uh, kind of fun and exciting okay. for today's uh, hip retro times. I want to be hip. Oh, man. I want to be hip in the motor. See? Yeah. See? Yeah, I just want to get my little RV do. What's an RV do? What is it? What does an RV girl wear? How do I That's do my it. hair? Is this it? <laughs> right well, I'm there. Good to that, go, that, man. That, that just works great. <laughs> that just works great right there. I love it. Do All you right. do a lot of the, okay. to, the, the multicolored hairs where a lot of people like the different three or four different colors in their hair? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have educated in all of it. That's typically not my clientele. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. So probably more than anything, what I would have somebody in my clientele or one of my um, younger guests would be to have something in the pastels, nothing yeah. very, real vivid. Right. You know, like to lighten it up till mm-hmm. it's a really light color, and then put in like a pale lavender. Mm-hmm. Or part of it, a pale pink, a very and past, I think that's really pretty. A very pastel yeah, color. yeah, because I'm more into the uh, like great looking hair, beautiful colors, yeah. uh, up to date. Um, I've been a professional makeup artist for several years, and so I'm all about the eyebrows and stuff like that because they're so important. Right. Sure. And um, yeah, but I'm really not into the vivids. Mm-hmm. But you'll find that typically, and you know some are, but some are, but not my my general client would not uh, be like that. No, I wouldn't. I, I couldn't do that. Yeah, sorry. Well, uh, I think it's kind of cool once in a while. I it, do too. It, it's got to be yeah. on the right person to where they you know they do the you know maybe the the red and the green and the purple or something. Oh, they kind of wow. do the kind of the different multicolored thing. It, it is a little much, but some people mm-hmm. kind of pull it off. It's it's kind of fun sometimes. Reminds me of oh, I've seen, I've lucky seen charms or something. Like that. My age that have. All blue hair. Well, yeah, like, yeah. And I don't mean like old blue hair. Yeah, I, I know. Mean, I mean like royal blue Neon hair. Neon blue. And they have a, shoot, a, a short, cute haircut. Uh-huh. It, it works really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, yeah. you have the I Love Bernie bumper sticker on the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally with that, sometimes they're, that, that kind of coincides together. And uh, so, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? So, uh, so the multicolored, not really the thing. The guys... Is the long hair coming back kind of like the 90s long-haired thing? You know what? I just did an interview uh, or submitted to uh, VIP Wichita Magazine. Bonnie Bean wanted me to uh, give her some feedback on what was new for fall or in for fall. And really at this point of the game, um, I, I would tell you no man bun. No, thank you. No thank man. You. Oh, thank you. Thank gosh. you very much. No man bun. No man bun, right? No. That's right. Okay, we agree. No, no man. No man bun. No man bun. And but long hair is uh, long hair, short hair, extremely short hair. It's really all kind of good. I can only re- really see in guys as far as everything is going out is the man bun. Okay. But I really like destructed hair, just like you said. Sure. Okay. So if somebody is. Um, Especially with the heavy part, if somebody wants to grow, a, a guy wants to grow out the center part, mm-hmm. um, you just kind of cut the sides really short 
leave the top longer, and then just gel the center back. Sure. So, and you can put heavy parts on both sides of it. But, um, and I've seen that quite a bit, especially being in the rock scene, kind of the rock metal scene. A lot of the guys do that. So that's kind of fun. Right, right. Yeah, it is. And I mean, if somebody has really great hair, a guy or a girl, it looks good and long. Sure. Sure. So that shouldn't that shouldn't determine that. The kids, uh, the the high school kids, still have like the emo swish thing going on. No, you know what? There have been <laughs> in my career. There are so many times I've tried to talk people out of stuff. Is I have, well, I have these two these two twin guys that they're, gosh, in their second year in their graduate school, and I, they used to play tennis at the club. Is how I got them in the first place, but. They came in. They had that Justin Bieber over there to the yeah. side there, and it's like, and I, and even then, that was when he was 15 years old, and now he's 20. I was like, "That's Hunter." It's got to grow up a little bit. It's time there. to get rid of that. Yeah, it's time to get rid of that. <laughs> and I actually one of my one of my clients. He's going to school in Fort Hayes. This is his first year. He came in, and he won't let anybody cut his hair. But he was in this weekend, and he, and I saw him. And it looked like it was swished over like that. I said, Ian, tell me you did not oh, man. fix your mm-hmm. hair like that. He goes, no. He said, no. I just I just washed it. He said, I didn't comb it. But I know he did this. Yeah, it had to do he that. Had to I know that. he did. He had this. to do that. Well, I did that, that a short yeah. time in high school, mm-hmm. and I, well, it was yeah, it. But you know what? When I was in junior high school, guys did it. Sure. Right. I know. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Well, I was trying to grow it out to to the long thing to do like the you know the rocker head bang and you know uh, being able to switch your hair around. And I got to the emo switch and I said I can't deal with this anymore. It's way too long and it drives me nuts. I've had short hair my entire life and I cannot grow it out. I, have, I just don't I have, like it friends that have boys that have had that haircut forever and ever and honestly and truly and i'm am not this is not an exaggeration they hold their head like this <laughs> oh wow <laughs> because that's the way they're, uh, they're whatever so time, used to yeah, yeah. yeah. that's uh-huh. funny oh my gosh no, well, you, they can't they can't they help can't help it, it. they oh, cannot man. help it they're gonna wow. have a they're crick in their neck. They're gonna have like some kind of neck problem, but they just hold They've it already like grown. They're gonna have a bad yeah. neck problem. Their bone structure is grown that way. Yeah. Let's get into makeup a little bit. Okay. Uh, to, for the women, is it what's popular now? The heavier makeup, or was it the big push for the more natural look of lighter makeup right now? Again, it depends what you're doing. If you're, you know, um, I would tell you that. Um, for fall, it's more of a matte look as opposed mm-hmm. to summer is more of a dewy look. Um, I feel what's really the, hold on, bad what's the because I didn't know this was going to be live feed today. And oh, don't I didn't worry. Wear any makeup? Yeah. Hey, look at me. I don't. No, I'm okay. Though. I yeah, got but this. I do every day. Come on, you are V girl, so I have an excuse, right? I don't have to do that anymore. Oh, now she's going to use that for an excuse. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But, Pam told me it worked. Uh, but uh, just as I spoke earlier about the eyebrows, how important the eyebrows really are. Uh, and I would say that's probably the biggest mistake that I see oh, yeah. most often is that wrongly shaped eyebrow because if they're mm-hmm. shaped wrong they can make you look surprised they can make i you look know sad. what is what's up with this thing where the women are shaving the eyebrow and then they draw it like up here in the middle of their forehead and it's almost like a <clears throat> what is yeah. that are, are you talking about a certain ethnicity or anything no oh, okay. i see Just, it on facebook and then they shave their personal eyebrows and then they draw on these like lines you know well, up, way yeah, up here on their stencils. forehead they have huh? stencils, and one of the things, as I worked for Bedhead for ten years as a, a platform makeup artist yeah. and uh, educator, and when I would teach a class or in front of you know a thousand hairdressers yeah. or whatever it would be, I would just tell them, "Okay, eyebrows are so important, but they're not supposed to be twin sisters." Thank right. you. They yeah. they are supposed to be sisters, but they're not supposed to be twin not sisters. Twin sisters. Because Perfect. everything on your body, yeah. there is, is not one thing on one side the that is the same on the other side. So you. It shouldn't be that perfection. Or people are using stencils now for the eyebrows. Eyelashes are really a big thing right now. Whether right. you have fabulous ones or fake ones, sure. and there's all these serums out there. Let's let's hold that thought just for a second. You got to take a bottom of the hour break. Everybody. Hard time tier. We'll come back here right on the Voice of Reason. <laughs> Wichita's fastest growing radio show. You're listening to The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on The Big Talker, KQAM. Welcome back into The Voice of Reason right here on KQAM. So this is going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. This is going to happen. (laughs) All right. So they're getting everything. If you're watching the Facebook Live, you can see it. They're getting the... uh, 
the equipment out. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. I'm, I'm going to take off my headphones while we do this for a while. Huh. So you'll probably hear the bzz in the background, which would be interesting. Okay. But, uh, so as we do that, we're yeah. shifting. Uh, we're kind of playing the uh, the uh, musical chairs here for a minute yeah. as we have another guest in the studio as well. Another fantastic uh, Wichita introduce, business. Yeah, introduce our great guest here. Okay, yeah. If you guys have seen my Facebook here this week, um, I am just the happiest camper literally on the face of the planet right now. Thanks ah, to... See, I like that. <laughs> ha, ha, see ha. how you do that. <laughs> Yay, I got the bell. <laughs> Thanks to my friends at Wichita RV. They have a west location and an east location, and I picked up my brand new to me, oh God, I love it, uh, travel trailer this week, and uh, Dale was so helpful. Dale, hi, how are you? Good morning, guys. Good how morning. You? How's how's everything going at Wichita RV? It's going great. We're you guys very are busy. busy. Yeah. yeah, and it's, uh, we just uh, opened up. Uh, service over on our west side oh, okay. uh, so that's pretty exciting so that yeah. has kept us really really busy right so. when i was at the east store the other day now i saw my 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 motor home or my i have a motor home but i now have a travel trailer yes. too but anyway i saw it over on the internet actually mm-hmm. as i was coming from colorado yeah okay and i'm like oh that's gonna be mine yeah. you know so i've been yeah. scoping this thing you know all the way from coast to coast almost but um what's going on i mean this is a great time of year to buy, whether it's new or used. Absolutely. What's Absolutely. going on? Well, we have, uh, we're restocking with mm-hmm. some new product, yep. and we have some uh, product that we've had for a little while, so mm-hmm. uh, we are making very, very incredible deals no on uh, some of the 17s mm-hmm. uh, that we have, and of uh, also some of our used product mm-hmm. um, just to, to get people out there before the yeah. end of the year to go enjoy yeah. this time of year is the Beautiful. best time to I go know. camping. It's yeah. not too hot. It's right. not too cold. Yeah. It's time to get out there with your family and friends and exactly. go have some fun. I think if that's the one thing that I could say, I mean, you know, it's been a couple months, you know, since I've been back in Wichita and uh, I've been staying in, you know, motor homes and RVs and travel mm-hmm. trailers and all that. And I have to say that it is so nice. It's peaceful. It's relaxing. And it's just really good for your soul. I, I don't know what else to say. It's good for your soul. It's good for your mind. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. The lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the perfect way to get away and still be comfortable at the same time. Yeah. 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 You're home away from home. Exactly. You get the yeah. best of both worlds there. Yeah. Oh, this is my home. I, I'm yeah, like, oh, I'm yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> You're like, this is my this home. This is it. I yeah. mean, I absolutely, you know, and it's really funny because I'm working with some. Uh, RV park owners, and uh, we're trying to come up with this new thing. It's where you would be able to park in the RV park, either your travel trailer, your motorhome, your camper, you know, whatever you end up getting, and they will have like these sheds. Okay, and mm-hmm. so if you have family coming and you maybe don't want everybody in your motorhome, your mm-hmm. coach or whatever, mm-hmm. they'll have these little sheds, and some of them are ten by ten, some are ten by twenty, and they're set up with office space or extra bedroom. Yeah. and it's a really cool concept yeah, for absolutely. us professional RVers, yeah. you know, that we want to say, oh hey, come on over, you ain't staying in my coach though. There's a little shed over there, <laughs> so that's what we're working on, yeah. but it's cool. <clears throat> absolutely, you know? absolutely. And I, I think it's too the really cool thing that I've noticed over in Colorado is we have a lot of folks that have been coming up. From from Texas, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get out of the flood areas and stuff like that to get a break. And um, but it, there's that whole thing they just kind of go from Colorado, and then about now or last week they start heading towards Florida. Mm-hmm. So they're coming right through here a lot of times. Yeah, you yeah, know? we see them all the time. Right. Yeah. Okay. What about service specials? Well, we are running some service specials. Mm-hmm. Um, we right now are when they're running a winterization special. Um, oh, good. The the folks that are done uh, uh-huh. with their RV for the year, it's time to get them blown out. Yeah. Um, get them checked over. We do a, a fall check. Um, make sure that. Their maintenance is up mm-hmm. to par, so that way, as the, as it's sitting over the winter, they don't have any maintenance issues. Right. Also, uh, gets them ready to put it away, but also gets it ready for when they're ready to head out, whether yeah. it be uh, you know right after the holidays mm-hmm. or right at the beginning of February, mm-hmm. March. They can right. get in and go. They're, they're ready to yeah, go. Absolutely. If you winterize it properly, then whenever you are ready, in a month or two, or if something comes up and there's a big Christmas event or something, you can just literally, you're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that. You can just get in it, turn it on, and, and yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. And you have a really awesome guy over there in your service. His name's Pat. Oh, yeah. 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 He was so yeah. cool. He uh, he had the uh, lovely experience of walking us from corner to corner, mm-hmm. and uh, he was so funny. I really wanted to just go out there and get inside and see her. I mean, when I first saw her outside, I was like, oh, she's huge. Yeah. You know, and then I wanted to hug her. Well, that's kind of tough. And and he was just giving me a hard time. He was like, we started this corner. Yep. And he was teasing me. He yeah. wouldn't let me get inside yeah. to look, you yeah. know. Yeah, absolutely. And then, then we finally get over on that side. And he's like, 
oh, go ahead. I was like, oh, yay. And I opened the door and I was like, oh, man, I'm in love. And he was like, he was looking at my husband. He goes, see how I do that? Yeah. Uh-huh. He was really good. Yeah. But he did not miss a thing. And I, I'm not kidding. He did go corner to corner, mm-hmm. explained everything and uh, did very, very good, you yeah. know, and suggested things that might make things easier mm-hmm. either on the road or when we're camping mm-hmm. or whatever. I was blown away. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So you're serv- he's in charge of service of the East one, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's our, God, he's, he's in charge of our shop okay. and he takes care of our new customers coming in uh-huh. um, that basically what we want to do when folks buy, whether it's a new or pre-owned RV mm-hmm. um, whether they've owned one or have not owned right. one before, they're all different. Oh, you yeah, know? they so, are. So we want, we want our customers to understand how they yeah. work. Right. Um, so we spend the time walking mm-hmm. you through that thing. Mm-hmm. And I know he'll slow you down. And he's <laughs> like, hold good. on. I yeah, know yeah. you might know this, but I'm going to show you again. <laughs> and that's good, you know? though. Absolutely. Because it was. In, in so many applications or things, it was totally different from what we were used to on our motorhome. Mm-hmm. Totally different. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, I did have another travel trailer probably, I don't know, eight or ten years ago. And even just in 10 or 8 years, the difference is night and day. Absolutely. They, Whoa. They evolve almost every year, it I seems know. like. It's, there's a fireplace in mine, yeah, for gosh sakes. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's an outdoor kitchen. It. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's. we have a lot of people come in and say, wow, this is fancier than my house. Exactly. You know? And, yeah. And they are. They are getting mm-hmm. very, very fancy. They are getting very, uh, the technology is mm-hmm. starting to carry over into the RV world now, right. um, where, again, like we said earlier, it's a home away from home. I mean, you can get in, you can go relax, but mm-hmm. you don't have to give up, you know, some of the amenities that right. that you'd want, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and sometimes people are like, okay, I don't need all of this, right. you know? But, but then they come back and they're like, I'm sure glad I had that fireplace. I, I woke up and I turned it on and, man, yeah. I... It really warmed me up. I'm right. glad we had that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's 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 fun um, to hear all the experiences that uh-huh. that people are having, and and that's what it is. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be. That's why I enjoy what I do I so bet. much. It's because we're helping people have yeah. fun, right? You know, How I mean, fun is that? It, it, it's a little different with some folks like you. You're using yeah. yours to live in, but, yeah. But you're having fun doing it. Heck you yeah. Know? So I mean, that's <laughs> I live the and whole work thing. In mine. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And um, there were some accessories and things in the store too. So yeah. if you're coming through you know you're an rver or first timer or mm-hmm. you know career person but mm-hmm. all kinds of cool stuff you guys had this uh solar oven uh-huh. all right now you just had one i yeah, and we'll yeah. get into that but there's a guy over in one of the rv parks that i i, I frequent over in uh, california or not california but colorado this time and he made a solar oven uh-huh. and so i was saying something to one of the girls at your store and she was like well, i think we have one and I was like, let me see that. Yeah. And it is cool. So I'm going to try it out as soon as I get back. Okay. I'm going to take a video. Okay. I'm going to send it to y'all so you know. I want to know how it works. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're fairly new. I know. You know mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they've just came out with yeah. them this year. I want to try. Um, a couple months ago. So yeah. I'm I'm excited right? to see I, I'm how you feel about you, it. I'm going to send you. I'll send you video. I'm going to give it everything I have. I don't know. My husband said something about we were going to do brisket and uh, baked potatoes, I oh. think. So I'm like, work. okay, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm really looking forward to trying that one. But then the other thing, too, I mean, even, even when it was like some pellets mm-hmm. for the, uh, you have a little bit of a different plumbing system, but it's still yes. indoor plumbing, guys. Yes. But it's so easy now. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. And there was little tablets you just drop in. You and just you drop go. in, and it takes yeah. care of the odor, and it yeah. takes care of, um, actually, one thing that we have... Uh, <laughs> A lot of, whether you're experienced RV or not, one, one thing people come in is, I need that RV toilet paper. Well, right. for one, it's not very good toilet paper, and yeah. it's very expensive. It is. Yeah. Um, so with this new, and, and it's not necessarily new, we've used it for a long time, it's a treatment you put in the tank, right. and it just takes care Dissolves of all that. It. Yeah. You can use regular toilet paper. Yay. It's amazing. I know. So. <laughs> yeah. I was so happy to find out. It's like, I don't have to use RV toilet paper. Yeah. You know, because 20 years ago to me, RV toilet paper, I'm like, I'm going to go paper. get a leaf. Yeah. I'm just gonna, <laughs> Dad, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a leaf over here. You know, but that's not the case anymore. You know, you, Robin, yeah. How's, uh, how's, Holy. How's it doing here? Doing great. Oh, my. <laughs> 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 You're looking studly. <laughs> Pam is gonna have you looking so good. See, well, there we go. And then you're gonna want to. Then you're gonna want an RV. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, now I you gotta, have to I have. Gotta, the... I gotta show everybody the style by traveling around. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So when are you gonna get your RV and come on over and see me? Uh, well, see, I gotta travel all over the place. Well, yeah, you do. Absolutely. I'll be going to California. California. Next year. Yeah. In my. I in my. That one. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be fun. Those California guys. I don't know about them. I'm gonna go to Hollywood. 
I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, I know. I've been there. It's a little weird. Well, you know, I think it's hilarious. I have never, honestly, though, I've never drove a uh, motorhome uh-huh. or a travel trailer in Hollywood. Oh, wow. I have not had that experience yet. Now, I will say Dallas. Uh, no, thank you. I didn't like that. Kansas City. No way. I didn't like that. You got to be used to driving these yes. things a little bit, especially yeah. the bigger ones. Yes. You know, and I, this is the honest, honest truth. When I very first went to work at a local radio station, it was a rock and roll station. Some of my friends out there across the town will know about this. And I, uh, my first day at work at this rock and roll radio station, and they go, um, this was in 89 or 90. And he goes, uh, does anybody in the building have a, a, have a good driver's license, a valid driver's license? And I'm like, well, I do. You know, rock and roll station, of course. <laughs> Nobody yeah. had one. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You know, 80s, 90s. What do you know? And he goes, oh, yeah, uh, Robin, I know it's your first day here, but can you run out to wherever, wherever and bring that motor home and get it downtown to the West Bank stage? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Thinking, you know, I'm camper girl. I can oh, handle yeah. this. Really? First time I ever drove this huge motorhome. And it was so windy. And I had to drive it on Kellogg. Oh, man. I was just like, <laughs> I was shaking. But I did it. You did it. I did it. I didn't bump anything. Well, that's you good. Know? I know. So they're not that hard to drive. Absolutely not. No, it, not. It, it takes a little bit of practice. Yeah. But after you get it, it's it's very easy. I mean, yeah. obviously, I do it all the you time. You do it all the time. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, it's... It like I said, it it can be a little intimidating. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, psychologically. But yeah, yeah. When you get in it and you go, just it's fall just in love. yeah, and they're so easy. Absolutely. Driving back the other day um, from way out east, you know, we went to see my dad out west, and we took Kellogg, and not a single problem. It just drove so nice. Yeah. And that hitch was phenomenal. Whoa. The sweat, anti sweat. Yes. Oh wow! Yes. Oh, no, I'm just yeah. a happy camper. What? I am. I am such a happy camper. <laughs> I am excited that you are happy. I, I am happy this. with you. Oh God! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, in addition to service special. Now it's time for that. Obviously, it's a great time of year to buy RVs. I think that when I'm traveling, I mean, there's some RV parks where you can rent your 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 power, your water, everything, mm-hmm. your Wi-Fi, your internet, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes even cable. It can be as little as 500 a month for all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you can go. I, I will let you know about that new RV park in Colorado that has okay. the. You know, so I want to start sending you some of this information okay. so you can t- tell others. Yes. You know, and um, there's just so many beautiful RV parks, and I think that. I run into people now that are just like me. They're like, I just want to do this. I don't want to own a home anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to have to have all that responsibility. And then the taxes keep going up and repair, repair, repair. And I was laughing. I'm like, I don't have any repairs. My home's under warranty. <laughs> na, 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 na. You know, I, you know how good that felt? Ah. So my friends were like, you know, my yeah. friends were like, we're still having to, we got to do some work this year. We got to paint. We got to stain. You know, got to do some yard work. And I'm over here going, <laughs> I don't have to do any of that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So it's if you nice. really want to, if you want to have that experience of like, I just want to live. I just want to live on the open road. Go where I want to go. Travel where I want to go. No, and, so here's the thing. Do you have to go to RVs? Here we go. Do you have no. to go to RV parks everywhere you go? Or can you just like, oh, no, no. I mean, what's, how's, how does this work if you're okay. traveling on the road for, uh, you know, for a living? Yeah, oh, it's wonderful. There's lakes, for example. There's one over by Westcliff, and you can stay there for two weeks, completely free. Now, there's nothing to plug in. I mean, you're on your own power sources at that time. You're on your own water supply at that time. You know, you don't plug into anything. You know, uh, but gosh, is it beautiful? You know, and then you might go to the next place in two weeks after that, and go to another place that does have plug-ins or a water source or whatever. It's fantastic. Very good. And you know, and it's just if it if it's just like you, I have a girlfriend, a uh, single girlfriend. I have several single girlfriends, and this is what they do with their campers, their travel trailers, their motorhomes. So it's not like you know you have to have. You can do it if you're a male or a female, young, old. It's easy and it's amazing. I'm loving uh, it. And Love you it. know the best part of this year? What? No bald spots. Aha! Uh-huh. I mean, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. You haven't right. seen any yet, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. I had okay. To confirm that, right? <laughs> Oh, 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 there's the part. There's the part. <laughs> I see it. There it is. Oh, uh, this is exciting. Uh, I got a question. Can I ask? I yeah, can yeah. Ask. Go. Uh, for those uh, that are just starting out, I mean, mm-hmm. there's the old pop-up campers and those types of things. Mm-hmm. And I motorcycle, and I'm seeing a lot of teardrops and those types of mm-hmm. things. What's the availability or the cost of getting roughly and getting those types of things or uh, the advances that's been made over the last few years? Well, and I'll tell you, that's, that's actually a good question because we have um, – the whole industry in whole um, in Wichita here, it, you didn't see a lot of small trailers like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they came and gone, they came and gone. Right. But over the last year, year and a half, we have seen so many people go into these small trailers, like yeah. the teardrop style or the single axle mm-hmm. that you can tow with a, 
a you car. know, a car, a yeah. small SUV. Yeah. I've, seen, um, I've even seen motorcycles towing some yes, of the teardrops. Yes, yes, and they, they, they also have those too. And the, the cost of them, um, you know, it, it really just depends. But mm -hmm. really, you could be looking at, you know, under 10000 um, to up to 20000 and under um, for something brand new. Yeah. So again, it just kind of depends on the features that it has, the brand that it is, um, how big it is. Those um, are so popular too. Yeah, like in Colorado. Yeah. Oh, I think anywhere there's like a lot of outdoor life and, and hiking and fishing and hunting mm -hmm. and all that. Those things are so popular. They are, and and we just got a new uh, a line in not too long ago that they're actually we're actually putting an outdoor package on them, which gives them an extra five inches of clearance. Wow. So when you oh, want to wow. go in the woods, you know you're not so low to the ground. You can go yeah. back in the woods and, and drive through there without bottoming me out. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <that laughs> you know, cool. and and they all weigh under three thousand pounds. And wow. They have bathrooms, uh, kitchen. I mean, it has everything, everything you need in a small package. And they're very, very neat. And yeah, very affordable. Yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and you're gonna see I think you're gonna start seeing that the R V world always runs in trends. Yeah. Up, down. I mean it it it's hard for yeah. us to keep up with, to be honest with right. you sometimes. Um but I think in the next few years you're gonna see a lot more of these small campers mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. than you're gonna see these big ones that you used to see going up and down the road all the mm -hmm. time. Right. So. I think those those things are so fantastic, and like I said, you see them everywhere over there. Uh, the the hunters and the fishers, mm -hmm. you know, the fishermen and fisherwomen and everything. They're so easy, mm -hmm. you know. And if you are, you know, kind of intimidated by the big ones, you know, start start there. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then if it's something you like and you want to continue, then just kind of you know grow. But I mean, I I cannot say how much I enjoy the RV life. I, oh. I just want people to know that if you're stressed and business is driving you crazy and, and the whole world's like psycho on you and you're just like, ah, what you do is you go get an RV and you go, see ya, you know, I'll be back when I get back, yeah. you know? And I can work from the road, I can shoot video, I can do radio, I can do anything from the road, so yeah, why would I not? Robert, let's go ahead and take a break here. Oh, we got oh you're looking steadily. Yeah. Stage, yeah. Making, it, uh, making it happen, the style. Oh my gosh. I might like actually fit into the times now. Hey, could millennial could generation, I kind of sort of fit in now. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, welcome into it. No, I just updated it. Not that that's... you were outdated. Oh, okay. Well, at least that's updated. good. Updated. Just updated. Dale, do we have fun in here or what? We, absolutely. absolutely. This is a blast. To, you have to come back. Okay? I will, definitely. Okay. Upgrading 2.0. We've got to take a break here. Seven okay. minutes to the top of the hour. We'll come back. Wrapping up hour number two of The Voice Man, Reason on KQAM. <laughs> You're listening to The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker KQM as we're wrapping it up. And uh, Pam from Salon Nadi, uh, it's all finished. How's it look from your side there? I think like it looks that. great. There we go. There we go. See, I. Uh, what do you guys think? It looks very good. That's well. Hey, I, wow. I can't wait to go uh, take a look in the mirror there and be able to be wow. able to see this. So it's a uh, it's the new retro fad thing, right? I'm hip now. You are. I'm hip now. Oh my God, he's got that fade part, man. Thing. You know? It's got the whole. It's, see, so it got the hard. Okay, so the hard part, which is okay. Uh -huh. so there the we go. Is, the key is as well as your wife. Uh, yeah. Well, that's she's gonna, gonna that's gonna be now. She likes the hair short. Yeah. She likes the hair short. Okay. I, when we got married, I actually had the long, like a little bit longer hair, yeah. and she enjoyed that. But once I got it short, she's like, "Okay, I kind of dig that." So, yeah. Well, uh, we'll where's Tiffany? We'll, Where, we'll hello. That's, yeah, that's at? right. She'll have to, to. She may have to call in, and uh, we do have a call on the line, which may oh, okay. be her. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to see and be like, "What's going on in there?" Uh, I warned her this morning and said, okay, "Oh, good. by the way, because yeah. I was going to get the haircut the, earlier this week," and said, uh, "Hey, I'm going to do this. It's been that driving me nuts. It's long. Him. It makes me feel like a daggone hippie. It's driving me nuts." And uh, and then I didn't, and she's been curious about this. So this morning I was like, "Hey, by the way, I'm getting a makeover on the show this morning," God, and uh, so she was a little concerned and curious to see what it. Would be so i'm i'm kind of excited about this so thank you pam very oh, much for this welcome. it's my pleasure it's a it's gonna it's be a good, good time so uh deadly. robin <laughs> yes it's never a dull moment when you're in studio <laughs> there's, you're always welcome, some, baby. <laughs> there's always something hey, that happens you know what you have coming next week what's that uh -huh, get ready i i don't think i can pull any harleys in the building although I would try if I was here. Ah, well, so, see, that's what we got to do. At least have yeah. them on the deck here or something. Well, know? yeah, I, I, there's a way, you know, we'll figure it out. But you're going to have some of the folks from the Wichita Toy Run and Sumner County Toy Run. Uh, Julie it. and some of the girls are going to join you next Friday to talk about the toy runs. I love it. We got okay. about 20 seconds left. Okay. But both of you give, uh, give yes, out yes. how okay. people can get a hold of you. Okay. 
Okay, you can reach Witch Tar V. Uh, best thing is go to our website, witchtarv.com, or call us at 316-733-7777 or 316-559-2900. Very good. Pam, go ahead. you got hey, about 10 Pam seconds. Pam from Salon Naughty for a good time call, 636-4400. I we'll love get it. you in. You like us on Facebook, you'll see our promotions that we have going on. Salon Naughty on Rock Road. I love it. Very good. Hour number three of The Voice Reason coming up. we got a lot more coming. Stay tuned. It's time for Reason. And I think that we should take that same idea and apply it here in our local statewide elected seats. If you don't know how to lead and do it under a Republican agenda and push Republicans who may be green, who may be freshmen, who may be trying to learn the system, if you can't pressure them a little bit as the leader of one chamber or another in order to do something productive in a sense that actually abides by Republicanism, then you need to be out of leadership positions. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Uh, good morning to you. Welcome into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker, 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side, KQAM. It's great to have you along. It is a Friday, and it really is a free-for-all Friday with uh, the things that we do on this show. Welcome into it. Let's make it a free-for-all. Whatever's on your mind, whatever's troubling you, bothering you, you're more than welcome to call in and chime in about it because, well, we just have fun discussing it right here on a Friday morning. Let's do it. Come on. All right. 721 talk if you want to join into the program. Uh, thanks again to Robin Lace, Mike Furches, uh, Wichita RV, and Pam with Salon Naughty joining. If you were watching the Facebook Live, yes, we actually did do a haircut, even a beard show here, and, a, and a, a quote-unquote makeover on the air. I appreciate Pam doing that. And uh, a new style that I've never done before. I'm waiting to see what the Mrs. Voice of Reason will have to say. And uh, with that in mind, let's go to the phones here. Kick off start of hour number three. Whatever's on your mind today on the Free For All Friday, 720-255-721. Talk. Good morning. What's your name? Hi, Stud. Ah, well, there it is, Mrs. Voice of Reason. Uh, I'm assuming you were watching the Facebook Live. The whole thing. And I have to say, Pam, rock. Mm. I love it. I love it. And honestly, I feel so spoiled. I feel like it's just a gift for me. <laughs> well, there's there there's a gift there. Um, yeah. Uh, so you like the you like the part, the hard part thing there. I don't know. I've never had that before. I was thinking about that, actually. And uh, so now I get to try it out. Yeah. No, I've never seen it before either, to be honest. But I'm kind of looking forward to it. Why not? Change it up a bit. But no, you look fantastic, and Pam did an awesome job. See, there we go. The endorsement of the Mrs. Voice of Reason, which means it'll probably, uh, so that's what we'll have to do from now on then. Yep, it's Hoosier approved. It Hoosier approved. That's what it's all about. Mrs. Voice of Reason. I'm glad you like it, darling. I love it. Have a wonderful day. There we are. That's Mrs. Voice of Reason right there and uh, the official approval. So everything is all well. Pam, well done. And that's uh, that's that's the approval that we actually needed there. So well done on that one. 728 and talk if you want to join in. Uh, we do. We just, uh, Fridays are just just the, uh, the what it is, the free for all. We have a lot of fun with it. We appreciate that. Pam, thank you again with Naughty. Uh, with Salon Naughty on there. You can check them out. And Wichita RV, Robin Lace, Mike Furch has always a great time in the 7 o'clock hour, as we always do on a Friday, uh, wrapping up the week here. It's open lines to you, whatever's on your mind. We did touch on in the first hour a little bit. Oh, by the way, we haven't even plugged it. At the bottom of the hour, at 8.30, uh, Americans for Prosperity, they're going to be joining the show just for a minute. As they plug, they're coming to Wichita here to do a big push and a big promotion. We'll talk to them about what they have going on and how to get involved when we talk about local involvement and, act- and activism and getting engaged. That's the way to do it. Americans for Prosperity. So a wonderful organization trying to work on tax reform, both at the federal level and at the statewide level. And we're working on that here in the local level as well. So we'll be joined by Americans for Prosperity coming up at 830 uh, in just a little bit here. But until then, it's open lines to you. In the first hour, if you did miss it, and I don't know why, none of the outlets, none of the talk shows, nobody has mentioned this. I don't know if they weren't aware. 
I don't know if they just didn't care. I don't know if it wasn't that big of a deal. But to me, a debate between Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders is kind of a big deal. And especially as we're discussing the tax reform bill at the D.C. level, they debate and square off against low taxes and free enterprise and big government with social programs and free everything that's not really free because we need to pay really high taxes. I started a grocery company with $100 out of my mother's garage, and I now employ uh, more than 1,000 people. Uh, I am extremely grateful that I now qualify for the estate tax. I learned from my parents that each of us needs to help those in need while pulling our own fair share. And I teach my children those same values. I believe that leaving everything to my kids would deny them the opportunity to gain self-esteem, satisfaction, and personal growth that comes from hard work and accomplishing goals. So why should my children or the children of any wealthy person inherit millions of tax-free dollars while other Americans have to pay tax on the money they actually earn? That was a question posed to Senator Ted Cruz in the debate on Wednesday saying, I'm actually privileged, first off, I'm privileged to pay the estate, uh, quote-unquote, death tax. It is totally absurd. And why you would feel privileged to be able to do that, you know, all the power too. I get that you have to have over $5 million to be able to pay the estate tax or uh, it's, um, in property, whatever the case is, which is why farmers, hey, I know it's really expensive for you and you may have to sell that as many farmers have to do when the farmer ends up passing and tries to hand it off to the young generation. But the question is, why, why would you actually try and get rid of such a thing? Because people need to pay their fair share and we need to pull our own while we take care of other individuals. My first first response would be, (laughs) uh, well, yeah, if you want to pay that estate tax and consolidate and downsize your business, then you can lay off everybody that you that you have employed to you. And that's exactly where Ted Cruz went. To be honest, the death tax is at the end of the day. It's not about you or your kids. It's about the thousand workers you said you employ. And if you don't want to hand the business over to your kids, if you want to shut it down, and lay those workers off, that's your choice. If you want to give the money to charity, God bless you. That is a wonderful thing to do. But I'll tell you, it's a terrible thing for those workers who are relying on that paycheck to to feed their kids, to pay their mortgage. What the death tax does is other business owners like you, when they pass the business on, the simple fact that you died means you've got a massive tax bill that the only way to pay for it is to lay those people off. I don't know what else to say. The estate tax, the death tax, after you pay taxes every single year for owning property or owning uh, uh, some type of valuable, and you pay on the tax of it every single year, and it continues to grow, and you pay on taxes every single year, then when you die, then you have to pay a tax on it again just to be able to hand it off to somebody else. To me, is the most ridiculous, absurd thing I've ever heard. Not to mention uh, the fact that the uh, quote-unquote wealthy, super wealthy ones that have billions and hundreds of millions of dollars in assets and and property and so on and so forth, usually get to scapegoat around that anyways by finding loopholes with really expensive lawyers. So uh, what's the point of even having a death tax in any way, shape, or form? 721-8255-721-TALK. Let's go to the phones here, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? My name is Eddie. Eddie, how are you, sir? Well, since it's open line Friday, and I don't want to really change the subject for two minutes, I'd like to make a little one-minute free. Uh, this is concerning the Gold Star family mm-hmm. and this circus that's going on in Washington, D.C. Yes. As you know, I am a Gold Star family member. My brother was killed in combat in Marines, uh, et cetera, like that during the Korean War. And um, as far as the president making a call, I don't think all presidents uh, have the knack to be able to do that. And second of all, which is more important, I do not believe that all family members even want to hear from the president because a lot of times uh, they actually blame the president for the fact that uh, they had to go overseas. Well, that they are in the mess to begin with. So I know that in my case, uh, my father disliked Truman, and I don't believe that he'd ever want to hear anything from Truman. But we did get, uh, oh, some kind of certificate or something like that with the nice words on it and supposedly signed by him. I don't know whether that's his real signature or just an auto writer. But anyway, um, Trump, to be quite honest with you, Trump does not have what it takes to make calls like that. General Kelly was correct. He knew that Trump just was not the man to make the call. 
You know, yeah, you, br- yeah. you bring up an interesting point, and I'm glad you mentioned that. And I haven't talked about that just in the sense of the political, the the politicalization of it. And uh, you know, I just I I thought it was petty in that sense. And in in my opinion, I took it as in just another ridiculous attack on Trump. But you bring up an interesting point about uh, many of these families not wanting to get a call from the president because you're right, they're they're in mourning and they blame they want to lash out and blame somebody, and they blame the the president for uh, allowing that order or that operation to actually happen. Uh, which I can't judge on. I'm not a gold star family. I haven't been involved in the military in that sense. I've had uh, distant relatives a little bit farther away from me be involved, but that's about it. Uh, so. Um, I haven't really thought about it that in that way that they don't even want a call from the president because usually you would think that if a president calls you, you would want to answer and take that and just be honored in that sense. But I would totally understand that. Now, uh, for Trump not being able to make a kind of call like that, I can see that as well. Do you think this call specifically from what you've heard was uh, in bad taste or do you think that it was taken out of context of not, well, he knew what he was signed up uh, signed up for and what he was getting into as opposed to, He's really brave. Uh, you know, he did a fantastic thing for his country. He knew this was a possibility of what what could happen as a member of the military doing this, and he's very brave for still accepting that challenge and still knowing it while going into that uh, that situation. Well, I tell you what, uh, from personal experience, uh, from my family, the words you do not want to hear is he knew what he was getting into, he knew what he was signed up for, and et cetera, like that, and that's. And that's almost like saying, well, uh, he knew he was taking a chance. He knew he was being stupid. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, those, that particular phrase, just totally forget it. Mm-hmm. And what a person needs to do is just say, I'm very sorry for your loss, et cetera, like that. Is there anything I can do to help you? Sure. And, um, but uh, um, this Frederica Wilson lady um, that uh, from Florida, Good God, take, look, take a look at her. She looks like some kind of a South Broadway hooker with her cowboy hat and her flashy <laughs> clothes and stuff like that. But anyway, she had absolutely no business doing that. What she should have done, honestly, was, oh, Lord, this is going south. She should have just very quietly somehow contacted Trump and said, boy, this, this didn't go good. Um, sure, man, you need to make another effort. And I, I, and more than likely, um, she was the one that picked out that phrase, and she was the one that really brought it home. Sure. Uh, well, and it got politicized. I mean, as you mentioned, it, they uh, she 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 got the phone call. She was around other politicians, and they they saw an opportunity to jump on that. So, I uh, Eddie, I appreciate the call, my friend. I want to get you another call here before we take a break. But uh, it's, I mean, that brings some some really good points and uh, a side of it that I hadn't really thought about, uh, just because I haven't been in that situation at all. But it totally makes sense. So. I appreciate that. Maybe you're right. Maybe just uh, there's certain presidents that just don't have that uh, emotional connection to be able to properly do that. And uh, that's OK in that sense. But they need to know their limits on where to do it and where not to do it. So I can totally see it. Let's go back to the phones here, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? Good morning, sir. It's Drew. Drew, how are you, sir? Outstanding. Good. Outstanding. You know, and, and that is one of the criticisms of Trump is that he doesn't do good off teleprompter. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> well, uh, you're right. He has a lot of gaps. He he says things repeatedly. I mean, he says things really repeated. He says things repeatedly, and it's huge. And and when he does that, it it turns off a lot of individuals. The way he speaks, his mentality, his personality, coming from New York, a little bit more brass. It's not the emotional connection that a lot of people are used to from uh, certain individuals. Yeah, but I want to drive this back to the main idea I've got, which is. The fact that in all of this, the person who really isn't getting the criticism they should be is the uh, the <clears throat> congresswoman, whatever you know she wants to pretend she's acting like. Uh, because what the hell is she doing listening in on a private phone call? That was that wasn't between her and uh, right. no, the, and and somewhere in the world. And this is what we see when we talk when we saw the the, the, the debates the other night. Somewhere in the world. We've managed, as a nation, to become indoctrinated, brainwashed, whatever. Sure. That government is the default position. Well, it's okay that the, the congresswoman was listening in. She's with the government. Sure. Well, we have a program that we want to get done, and it's okay because if it doesn't work, there's always the government, whether it's education, 
whether it's if you, what about your property? What's going to happen to it? Well, it defaults to the government. We have become we we become socialized. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. That, I mean, we do. We fall back on that, and that happened with. I'd even take it to the next level with taking it to uh, a lot of the disasters. Where's the government? Why isn't the government helping? We we need the government. We need when we talk about health care, we need the government. The government needs to help me. The government needs to take care of this because I deserve it and it's my right. And that's really where the mentality has. We've we've created that situation to where we expect the government to be there holding our hand and taking care of us in many situations. So you you bring up a really great point there, Drew. I appreciate it. Let's take one more call here before we take a break. Good morning. What's your name? Hey, boss, this is David. I'll try to make this short and simple because I know you're up on the break, and I know how me, being the technical guy, know exactly how important and how hard that is to get in. Hey, but uh, That's all right. What's on your mind? Something, something else that kind of disturbed me a little bit. It, now, whether it's true or not or what, why it hasn't happened is the South Carolina Gamecocks, University of South Carolina Gamecocks women's basketball team won the national championship last year. Okay. Right. And in college basketball, anybody that's not lived under a rock knows in the last 15, 20 years, it's either been the Tennessee Volunteers or the Yukon Huskies. I will say right you know, now so, that I uh, have lived under a rock because I have no idea who any of these teams are or who that is. <laughs> well, any, any, anyway, just step across the hall there and, you know, ask, your, ask Scott and Steve there. Anyway, I read and where they have not been invited to the White House. Now, before anybody jumps on that, you know, oh, you know, what business do teams need to go? Sports-wise, when it comes to professional athletes, okay, that, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll waver on that a little bit. But when it's collegiate, you know, these are amateur athletes. These aren't paid athletes, right? Sure. You know, and, and it, it, they, every one of them, you know, and there have been talks with coaches throughout the Southeastern Conference, the SEC, you know, that played for those teams and it's been like, I, one lady, uh, she's an assistant at Tennessee now, she's like, I have went to the White House for national championship teams every year since Ronald Reagan, right? Why haven't they been extended an invite? Now, I know right now in the world there's more pressing issues going on, but well, I, I don't know, where where is their invite and, and things like that, but... You know, I, it's, another it's, thing. I mean, it's a good question, and I, and I, well, and I hate to catch you because we're we're running late on the break here. It's an interesting question. I think it. I mean, if it's if it's something that I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, if it's been something that's been invited every single year, then I mean, okay. I would say that right now, especially with the issues going on in Puerto Rico, with the North Korea threat, with everything else going on, that there are some other priorities that we do need to focus on. And if it does calm down, uh, especially with trying to get legislation under control for tax reform and for health care repeal and so on and so forth, then, yeah, let's start inviting teams back and making it a little more open in that sense. Uh, but I would say that, I mean, right now, I... I, I mean, I don't want to go down the road of trying to call him a sexist because he doesn't like women in that sense, so therefore he's not going to invite him at all. And I wouldn't say that uh, in any way, shape, or form. But, David, I appreciate it. Got another call on the line. Stay there. We'll get to you as soon as we come back. This is The Voice Reason on KQAM. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on The Big Talker KQAM. Hey, good morning to you. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason. 27 minutes past the hour. Coming up after the bottom of the hour, we're going to chat with Americans for Prosperity with an event they got coming up this weekend. A way to get active and engaged. Well, let's go right back to the phones here, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? This is Gary. Gary, how are you, my friend? I'm doing fine. Hey, uh, two kind of comments. I got that was defending the uh, inheritance tax to Ted Cruz. Uh, <laughs> you know, the Bible in uh, Proverbs, uh, the Book of Wisdom, uh, one verse says, uh, a righteous man leaves an inheritance to his children and his children's children. Mm-hmm. And so right there, and, and I'm sure there's many, many other examples, but it also talks very much about uh, uh, being in debt and the debtor is uh, a slave. Sure. So why, why this man... Would what his rather have his children be in debt to start a, a, another business? 
Uh, you know, it's, it, it comes in, and I don't know if it's it's the mentality of the quote-unquote privilege that he has because he's made more than other people, and therefore he doesn't. No, I totally get the fact of not wanting to raise spoiled children, quote-unquote, and have them just accept the fact that they are better off. But you want to take care of your family. You want to leave your family better off than you did and have them have a head start. Uh, now you teach them civility. You teach them to uh, take care and not take it for granted and to still be uh, very uh, t- um, I mean, very uh, honest and very respectful because of that fact. But yeah, you're right. I mean, why would you say, ah, you know what? I don't want my kids to get anything of this because, well, they need to work for it. So therefore, I'm just going to uh, pay the estate tax. I may have to consolidate, close down my business because I, that's just what needs to happen. <laughs> well, not only that, but, uh, you know, he, he, I'm sure there's many ways that he could have uh, taught his children the work ethic in his business. They exactly. Could, we, have them work there. Have them be baggers at the grocery store because, you know, you're going to teach them how to work from the ground up. Gary, I love it. I appreciate the call, my friend. Hang tight. we got some calls on the line lining up. Stay right here. We'll be back in just a minute. Open up lines to you as we finish up a Friday here. Have a little fun. This is The Voice Reason on KQAM. Keeping reason in the world of politics. We are working together. This is about extremists who are trying to destroy humans. And this is the rest of the world trying to live in peace with the different religious beliefs that we have. And we're allowed to do that. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Helped by turn the microphone on. Welcome back to the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker KQAM. Wrapping up the show today on a Friday, 36 minutes past the hour. 721-8255-721. Talk advancing conservatism on a daily basis to where it's so entertaining you don't want to turn the dial, uh, which it sounds, I mean, that sounds great. Keep it right here, my friends. This is the Voice of Reason brought to you by, in part, Inman Harvest Cafe, 112 South Main Street in downtown Inman. It's not just Friday. It's not just the free-for-all Friday, but it is, yes, the day we look forward to every week. It's the Fried Chicken Friday, and Katie's online with us. Katie, we talked to you two hours ago. You guys were already uh, getting everything ready for the breakfast, getting ready for the great food lineup this uh, this Fried Chicken Friday. But uh, how have things progressed over the last couple hours? Oh, it's going great in here, Andy. Happy Fried Chicken Friday again. Oh, we love uh, it. We finally decided on the uh, on the sweeter version of the of the Ooh, butternut squash. Yes. So it is going to have the brown sugar and the butter on it, and I I don't know if it's going to have marshmallows or not. It's going to be a surprise <laughs> to me, even. And it's, then um, it's going to be beautiful. Of course, we're also having it. You know what? Everything always is. It yeah. is. Yes. It's, yeah. So um, we're also going to have the, the baked tilapia with the garlic, butter, and herb seasoning that I will be making here in just a minute. And remember, we talked about the fact that it is actual butter. So mm-hmm. people were saying there's too much um, cholesterol in butter, but I I don't care yeah, see, that's right there. That's what we're talking about. That's that stuff. I mean, <laughs> there's too much cholesterol. Milk gives you cancer. Anything that has any kind of meat will just make you die. And, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's, heck with that. People have lived I mean, on homegrown we, grandma's cooking yes, for hundreds of years. Right. Tell me how it's bad all of a sudden now. That's exactly right. And, you know, they, they come up with these new theories about what's causing, you know, uh, our demise all the time. And it's different every year practically so i just quit listening a long time ago so butter and cheese are life yes okay. exactly so <laughs> then we're also having a chicken uh lasagna with the with the alfredo type sauce the chicken uh lasagna noodles cheese and then a homemade uh crumb topping with the with the it's like homemade stuffing okay and then you crumble it up you know, mm, crumble it up and put it on top. So that's those are the three things. Then, of course, if you come in the evening, our buffet comes with the roast beef always. So our famous roast beef um, is always on the buffet along with the chicken and the mashed potatoes and the, all the things we just talked about. We kind of rotate those lunchtime things into our supper. So all three of them won't be there because we're, you know, we're small. We have limited sure. space. So you got to so, make it all then, fit there. Guess what I did? What's that? Guess what I did? I wrote down the pies so I don't have to actually remember what they are. So, 
That's right. So the pies, we got to remind everybody that the pies are available all day, but uh, yes. you get the free slice of pie during the buffet in the evening from 5 to 8 o'clock. It's right. first come, first serve. So if you want a piece, uh, you got to get it soon before it disappears. So, uh, it's, uh, yes, you have the great list of pies. What do you got for us today? Today we've got coconut cream, peanut butter cream, custard, oatmeal raisin. That one's like an oatmeal raisin cookie, only it's a pie. And it's really, really yummy with a scoop of our homemade ice cream on it. So good. Very okay, nice. oatmeal raisin, then rhubarb, blueberry, and then this afternoon, like I said, we'll be making a banana split and a lemon meringue. So those are the ones that you're going to find. And it is first come, first serve. We won't run out, but your favorite slice might be gone. Might so be if gone. you go up there and you think you're going to grab a peanut butter and there isn't any, that's what I'm talking about. You're going to have to get it when you come in the door. I love it. I love yeah. it. It's Inman Harvest Cafe. It's something you you have to experience. It's going to be a Friday. Go out and enjoy a little bit. 112 South Main Street, uh, right there in downtown Inman, 620-585-6925 or visit them online, InmanHarvestCafe.com. Katie, you guys have a wonderful fried chicken Friday. It's going to be a great time and we can't wait to see what's yeah. happening next week. Can I give you my overall hours? Go for really it. Yes, fast? please do. Please do, yes. Because we, we get yeah, we get people all week long that say they listen to you talk on the radio. It's not just Fridays, because we're open Tuesday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., except for Thursdays and Fridays when we're open until 8 p.m. So lots of chances to come see us. We've got great food all week long. It's not just on Friday. All week long. you got to enjoy it when you can. I love it. I appreciate that, Katie. You guys enjoy the week. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Andy. Talk to you later. Always a good time. there. That's the Inman Harvest Cafe. Go ahead and check them out. And uh, we love hearing the fact that people listen to us on the radio here and go up and check them out as well. So thank you for that as uh, supporting the uh, the local business and the advertisers. We love that and we appreciate that very much. So Inman Harvest Cafe, go ahead and check them out. we got to get an update as well. We talk about activism and engagement and things that we can do, especially in the tax reform season that we're in with the tax debate. And I want to bring on here Elizabeth Patton with the Americans for Prosperity, a uh, great organization that we talk to all the time as you know jeff glendon comes on the show uh, very frequently and elizabeth's on the line with us here real quick elizabeth how are you today i'm doing well thanks how are you oh we're doing great we appreciate you coming on here now we talk with jeff all the time we love chatting with him but you guys are actually going to be coming here to the wichita area for this weekend for some great stuff what do you guys have going on yeah absolutely so we have a walk going on this weekend uh where we're really uh, able to hold our elected officials accountable by getting uh, some door hangers out and talk to people about our message uh, about lower taxes and a fair and simpler tax code and also about what the legislature did this last session. So um, it's an opportunity for us to meet and get some donuts at Krispy Kreme at 7777 East Central Avenue in Wichita, uh, grab some door hangers, uh, get a tablet from us, and we can go hold our elected officials accountable by uh, talking to constituents, getting our message out in a real way. Um, I know people are used to going door to door in election cycles. Uh, but with the session fast approaching for next year, it's an opportunity for us to uh, make a difference now and keep them from raising our taxes again next year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's a fear that they said we wouldn't have to worry about. But after the discussion of potentially expanding Medicaid in the state, after talking right. about increasing education spending potentially in the state, after talking about the salaries for the uh, corrections facilities in the state, with so many things happening on a yep. non two year budget cycle year, we may be looking at another tax increase this year and potentially potentially next year again. So this is something that we need to be aware of. Absolutely. If the legislature can't get their spending under control, they absolutely will be looking at raising our taxes again. But this is such an opportunity to get involved now and make a difference now and have your voice heard today. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, I mean, this is a way for us locally to be aware of this. Again, where are you guys meeting and uh, what all are you going to go over? Sure. So it's going to be uh, the Krispy Kreme on East Central, um, 7777 East Central. It's pretty easy. Um, so grab some donuts at 930. We'll have actually some donuts for you. And then uh, we're going to be giving you door hangers and tablets. We'll give you a brief overview about how to do that. If you've never walked doors before, we'll make sure you feel comfortable. Um, we'll have a group of folks ready to go. And we'll be just going around talking to constituents that uh, we've already picked out. We've got it all set up. It's easy. You just have to go uh, to the doors that we've already lined out for you and talk to them about uh, tax reform and lowering our taxes and the retroactive tax increase from last session. You'll have a script. Uh, couldn't couldn't be easier. Um, and also, if tomorrow doesn't work at 930, uh, we 
we'll be doing these again in Wichita, but also if you're interested, um, we would love to do it you know, locally. If, if anyone outside the Wichita area wants to get involved um, in their sure. area, we can accommodate that as well. You know, I love doing the door to door and I haven't done it years, but in college, the college Republicans is really what that was for to be able to do the door to door campaigning. And it sounds intimidating for a lot of people, but it's actually a lot of fun, especially when you're doing it with a group <laughs> of individuals to chat right. with and chat with people. If you're politically engaged in any way, shape or form, it's just a blast to go and talk to people. And then when you hear their concerns, to be able to hear what their concerns are to inform exactly. a little bit. And when we talk about grassroots campaigning from the Republican Party, from the conservative grassroots campaign movement, this is how it's done is just getting people aware, opening their minds a little bit to listen and then maybe making them realize something that because all they've heard is that, well, the puppy dogs and children are going to die unless we increase education spending. And that's not the case (laughs) in any way, shape or form. So this is a great way to do it. And it's a lot of fun. So I'm glad you guys are doing this. Well, thank you. And you 100% put the nail on the head there, Andy, and it is a lot of fun. And we make it really easy with AFP. So this is a great opportunity to get started and really make your voice heard. I love it. Americans for Prosperity. It's the walk this weekend, this Saturday, starting at 930 tomorrow at Krispy Kreme. Go ahead and check it out. Elizabeth, thank you for giving me that update. You guys have fun tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, it's a great time there. That's Americans for Prosperity. That's a, that's one organization that if you do want to get involved and you are concerned about the taxes, you might want to join up with them a little bit. And again, the uh, the door to door stuff is just a blast. It's a lot of fun. I used to do that all the time in college. And you get some exercise. You get outside a little bit. You get to chat with people, uh, or you get to dr- just drop some literature on their front door if they're not home. But it's a great time. And grassroots movements, grassroots campaigning. That's how Republicans and conservatives win on both elections and an agenda. That's how we do it, because you don't get the word out any other way. People don't have TV all the time. People don't listen to the radio all the time. People don't go online all the time. They just hear what their neighbors and their friends tell them. And the only way you can actually get in the door there is to be able to knock on their door and talk to them. So appreciate that. Uh, Let's go back to the phones here, shall we? 728-255-721-TALK. It's open lines to you for the last 15 minutes of the show. Good morning. What's your name? Hey, Andy. It's Sean here. Sean, what's going on, my friend? Hey, um, I wanted to talk about this crap that uh, I heard about yesterday that really angered me. What's that? With this um, uh, this this uh, idiot congresswoman. Um, <clears throat> now, if I remember correctly, and I and I I don't remember, is it Sheila Jackson? Is it the same Democrat from Texas that's caused some issues no, uh, before? No, uh, she's from Florida. I believe her name is Frederica. Oh, Wilson. that's right, the Frederica. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> before I. Uh, before I volunteered to go to uh, Iraq back in uh, back in um, uh, <clears throat> late 2006 as a member of the Third Infantry, um, before that, before I went back into the regular Army, I was a member of the California Army National Guard. All right, you know what I did in the Army National Guard there in, What's in that? Uh, California? Uh, <clears throat> funerals. Lots of mm-hmm. military funerals. Sure. Okay. So when I hear when I when I heard about this crap, and then I saw a picture on on TV of this young widow hugging her hugging her husband's casket with their daughter by her side. You know, it, it really choked me up. But at the same time, I can't tell you that just the when I think about what this bimbo congresswoman said, the rage, it just go, runs right through my blood. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can't lose a man on the battlefield anymore, apparently, based on race and have it not be politicized. And that's all she was doing. Of just course. trying to get press and make a name for herself. Well, look, they, they see they find any opportunity to be able to attack and demonize Trump. And uh, whether they took the comment out of context, whether, like Eddie mentioned earlier in the hour, or the fact that maybe just Trump doesn't have the right emotional connection or that tone of voice to be able to portray what he's intending to do, it doesn't matter. But the first off, the question is, why is the, the widow sitting with a Democratic legislator who despises Trump and wants to take it and run with it as soon as they hear a phone call from President Trump? And the fact that President Trump even went out of his way to make a phone call to somebody and do and Mike Gallagher, you know, I know he kind of focuses a little too much on this, I think. 
But he made a really good point of, is it really the intention of Donald Trump to literally call somebody and abuse them and make a snarky comment to them during a time of the, is that is the whole intent and purpose. And he's that maniacal and that devious and that terrible of a human being. Or, you know, are they just trying to manipulate and twist the wording and twi- twist his counter, his message? Because that's what they do. And that's what they've done since the time that he's announced his run for presidency. Well, um, now, reasonable people know that that what Trump was trying to do. Of course, but the, but half this. the uh, but Sean, half the country's not reasonable anymore. That's the thing, and that's what we're up against. Which is why every time something comes out, Donald Trump's not helping people in Puerto Rico because he's dragging his feet. Not true. Donald Trump said something terrible to a to a, a gold family. And, uh, and the widow, not true. Donald Trump hates puppy dogs and children because he wants to cut programs uh, from growing exponentially year over year with social programs. Not true. Donald Trump, I mean, it goes on and on and on, and they find everywhere because half of the country right now is so ideologically driven, so emotionally driven, that they are not commonsensical and actually can piece it together, which is why we see Antifa and members right now that want to call him a fascist, a white supremacist, a Nazi, and they talk about advocating to remove him from office. Well, this, that's why I believe that Trump was set up to, to push the narrative, keep pushing the narrative that he's a racist. So, But you know what? First of all, you and I both know what Grandpa would say about this if he was here at the moment. I'd say suck it up and move on because it's not even a discussion. Well, you know how he feels about a good beat. <laughs> <laughs> There's that, too. There's that, too. Sean, I appreciate the call, my friend. I mean, it's it's so frustrating, which is why I haven't really talked about this on the show, because to me, it's the same exact thing as when the Harvey Weinstein thing. It is, it's, it's pop culture. It's... It's a twisting of the words. It's the playing of the politics of unnecessary issues. We're in the middle of a major tax reform right now at the federal level. We have the Senate wanting to do a tax reform light the same way they did. Uh, they tried to do an Obamacare light. They're not focused on the major issues because they're so hung up on every single word and tweet that Donald Trump does, and it's ridiculous, and it's stupid, and I am one that likes to focus on issues. And I like to focus on policy. I don't like to be drug into this drama crap because politics twists everything that you say. They, someone could be listening to this program right now and just be saying that I'm a heartless SOB because I'm not actually supportive of attacking Donald Trump for making a comment that was taken out of context and was taken out of the message that he originally intended because they hate him. And that's the way it could be portrayed and twisted because we're so wrapped up in drama that we don't actually focus on the issues. Donald, uh, Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders had a phenomenal debate on tax reform, and Bernie Sanders exposed himself for lying, first off, for wanting to cut taxes for the middle uh, for the middle class, and then saying that we need to raise taxes across the board because we need social stuff, and I'm a democratic socialism, and I want free goodies for everybody. It was a substantial debate. And it was fantastic, and not a single talk show host has talked about it. Not a single person has talked about policy of real tax reform. Why? Because we're stuck on the drama of Donald Trump. And if we continue to do this, we'll never get anything accomplished. We'll never be productive of getting the agenda done that we set out to actually do as Republicans, as conservative, as Trump supporters, as outsiders, and as anti-establishment individuals. We're never going to get anything done because we're always stuck in defending Donald Trump with something that he may or may not have done. Yes, he does stupid things. Yes, he makes stupid comments sometimes. Yes, he makes stupid tweets sometimes. But let's focus on the issues and let's move past that stuff. Politics has really sunk and really lowered themselves to something that's really not, you know, substantive anymore. And I'm not okay with that. Let's go back to the phone, sir, before we take a break, shall we? Good morning. What's your name? This is Ellis. Ellis, how are you, my friend? Just fine. I just want to mention that, yeah, I, I don't think he's made that many mistakes. I think that they've just made up a lot of stuff. Right. And also, you'll notice that uh, out of all this drama, that's something that the communists have always pushed, the communists on in the Democrat Party have always pushed, is sure. how you feel. And well, exactly. meanwhile, I don't see any of the uh, people on the other side talking about how it was an illegal alien invader that started the fire in Napa Valley that's killed 41 people <laughs> and is going to cost us $1 million to... I mean, that was a horrible fire. Oh, sure. But, and, but I haven't seen any of these people that are just so upset with... But remember, they're just the a dreamer. Upset something, the way he said it, they haven't said anything about it, that this guy was a Mexican national. Sure. To start the fire. So, you know, I just go past it. Oh, it irritates me, but it's just one more reason to vote against them and and, and primary the rhinos. 
Well, that's very true. I mean, you're absolutely right. But remember, they're just dreamers. So if they cause harm, if they cause issues, if they're murderers, if they're rapists, if they're drunks, if they you know start fires, if they crash their cars, if they drive without a license, if they're whatever, they're just dreamers, and we need to accept them, and we just need to open the borders because they need the same opportunities as we do. Yeah, yeah you can accept them. I don't. <laughs> right, exactly. Ellis, I appreciate the call, my friend. we got to take a break here. Wrapping up the show today, we can squeeze in another call or two when we come back. If you'd like, 728-255-72 and talk. This is The Voice Reason on KQAM. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on The Big Talker KQAM. Well, what a show it's been. Good golly. It's been a fun one. It's been exciting. That's what we do on a free-for-all Friday. By the way, the program today brought to you by Network Consultants. We talk about them. Business owners, listen up. It's This is for you. I know you got stuff working on your programs, working on your system, working on just you operating on a daily basis. Network Consultants can help you out with that. They can't work on your actual uh, specific programs. They can help you with your network and your computer so everything runs smoothly. They're an infrastructure company. They help it with firewalls and sonic walls, database safety and security, network communication. Maybe you're having trouble syncing everything up. It happens a lot. If you're a business and you have multiple computers, you know that, right? VPN and backup solutions, even getting you set up on the cloud, which many individuals are doing it nowadays. They work with small and medium businesses. They understand the importance of how the small business needs to run. You have all those programs that run on your computer so you can do your business, whether it's accounts receivable, whether it's actual programs for uh, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. They make sure your computers and your network run the way that they need to. It's the side of the business I know that you usually don't pay a lot of attention to, but it's really one of the most important sides of the business. It costs more money to actually fix the issues when they come up than it is to actually maintain them. Call right now. Tell them that I sent you, and you'll get a free network analysis. They'll come out. They'll visit your business. They'll review your system, help any way that you can, even help guide you to manage your own network. I don't know another company that actually gives you the tools to do it by yourself uh, as well because they're all about the relationship with the client. They do have month-to-month plans available for you. You do not have to do long-term agreements. All you have to do is check them out. 316-201-4624. Tell them I sent you and get that free network analysis. Or you can visit online as well, network-consultants.com. Again, network-consultants.com. Give them a call. Tell them that the Voice of Reason sent you. Great sponsor of the Voice of Reason. We love having them on board with us as well. Have a great weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. Wrapping up uh, next week, starting, we're going to be talking to a lot of the uh, city uh, uh, city candidates for city council, a lot of the candidates for the Wichita School Board. Get the information out there for you. This is your show. It's time to speak up, speak out, speak loud, speak proud, speak the truth, and always speak some reason. This is the Voice of Reason on KQAM. Have a great weekend, everybody.